I'll be better. 
Alright, and welcome in to Hard Rocker Esports taking on IUPUI. IUPUI. So, welcome on in, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Adam EV500. Joining me today after his wisdom tea surgery is <laughs> Wyatt Socks Boy 3. He can actually talk now. Last yeah. week he was a half a chick chipmunk. A little bit out of commission last swear week. Swear to God, his cheek was just swollen up. But we have a great matchup for all you guys. Uh, both teams are one and one, and the Hard Rockers are ranked 24th out of 82 teams in the North Conference. Yeah, which is a big deal, right? Big deal. We there. were able to pick up that one game two win off Washington University in St. Louis last week that really set us up to be a high seed going into this match today. So, well, it is officially 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock here in Mountain Standard Time, which means... It's time to introduce the players. Let's do it. All right, so <laughs> of course they're not <laughs> standing by the door. Of course, of course they're, they're not. Of course they're not. When you try to get League players to do anything besides anything that's League of Legends, this is what you expect, all right? Unless you rehearse it a bunch of times and ingrain it in the brand. So, all right, and here we go. Introducing the players. Wyatt, take it away. All right. Want to... Okay. All right. Cool. In the top lane, Sam, undervalued Nesbitt. In the jungle, Alex, Void, Matthias. In the mid lane, Yuki, Yoki, Lewis. <laughs> Bot lane, Lawrence, Lawrence Hartnett. And at support, Avery, Gray Enigma, Schroer. And that is the starting r roster. Oh, and coach. Coach Chris Matthews. And there is your lineup for today inside for the Hard Rockers. And for IUPUI, you have Zadok, J Riggs, Frodo, Baguettes, Moodles, and Nasty Nados. So they are just looking, they are saying they are ready to get into this game one of this best of three. And we'll go ahead, we'll just pull this up right now. Why you got a key fragment? Because you got an honor. Whoa! Whoa! There we Whoa. go. Uh, and here we go. Champion selection for game one of this best of three series. We do. All right. So right off the bat, the Hard Rocker Esports going to ban away that Lee Sin. Lee Sin is a very hyper carry jungle who can definitely do a lot of work, especially in this current patch. So doesn't surprise me the next band coming in for IUPUI or Indiana University, Purdue University, Indianapolis. So we're just going to say IUPUI Jaguars. The yep. Trinity are going to be taken away. That's kind of weird. Um, we saw You Are My XP take that out last week against uh, Washington St. Louis. And now the Lissandra are going to be banned away from Frodo Baguettes. He played that, he's been playing that for two weeks straight. And it's done a lot of damage. Yep. They don't want to see that in the cane band away from Void. So that is one of the junglers that he's been uh, warming up on. Going to take that off the map. And now the Morgana can be taken away. Uh, Nasty Nados has a lot of Morgana games. So here, final ban of this first rotation coming in. We uh, Kind of a weird ban strategy coming from IUPUI. So we'll just have to find out and see what their final ban is. And they're going to take away the Karthus. Void's been playing a lot of Karthus lately. So we won't see that today. Now time for the first pick here. A lot of discussion happening. Lots of choices still on the table. We saw the crit item, uh, marksman items being buffed up for 9.3. So it looks like the Urgot's going to be hovered, and that's what is going to be locked in first. So now we get to see there's several other picks that can go into this. They might be picking a Fiora. The, um, IUPUI has a lot of Fiora time on it. So let's just see what else. Ten seconds, and we will see this first pick in for IUPUI. It Ooh. looks like they are going to pick up the Caitlyn. Caitlyn is very much busted right now uh, with the new crit items. Yeah, 
the new crit items really helped out Caitlyn, and that just the the attack range that Caitlyn has really helps her in the landing phase. And now that, out champions. And now Frodo Baguettes is gonna pick up Zoe, uh, taking away a Yuki one trick pick. Yep, that is one of Yuki's more comfortable mid laners, but we'll see it on the red side of the map this time around. And now Void's gonna get Jin Zhao, which is a great way to roam with the heart uh, with this hard rocker comp and now they're hovering over the thresh for Greg Nigma. And they do pick it up. This will be the third, first time we see the Thresh come out for the Hard Rockers. It's been banned every single game so far, except for this one. So now we get to see Greg Enigma getting something he likes. So now the Janna is going to be picked up Ooh. for Nasty Nados. And that will match his gamer tag. Those Nados will be coming through from Janna. Nados! But I like the Thresh pick into that because, you know, be able to hard engage onto the Janna or the Caitlyn. They're really going to have to watch where those Thresh death sentences are flying. Now that Talia going to be taken away, we saw Yuki with Talia last night. Absolutely popped off with it. Uh, two nights ago against Colorado State University, uh, we, the Hard Rockers scrimmed them. And now the Fiora is going to be taken off the table, which is going to not give Zadik a lot of options. That's one of his mains that he's been playing. So now they're going to take away the Lucian from Lawrence. And now the final band's coming on in. A lot of options still to decide. Yeah, we'll have to see what they're feeling here. IUPUI still has to select a top laner and a jungler. So And their jungler is an act is a master tier. So they are gonna take away Cassiopeia. So they're not really uh, the hard rockers don't look like they're worried too much of what this uh, jungler can do. They're going to kind of let him have his pick. Yep. More more concerned about, you know, making sure he's not on his one-trick champion or his, more, his primary. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, just let him, you know, see if we can't play around the rest of his champion pool. And now the Shen's going to be picked up for Zadok. That's going to go up into the top lane. Lawrence, now he's... This might be the ADC pick here for Lawrence. Now that we have seen kind of a lot here of everything yeah. else. So seven seconds. Looks like they're hovering the Sivir, and that's what they're going to pick up. And that's actually going to help in yeah. their lane push. They're definitely looking for some to just push, 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 and take priority in lanes. And now, now we're looking for the mid lane. Great drafting strategy here by the Hard Rockers, leaving the mid lane to last, figuring out what is Frodo Baguette's going to be picking. Yep. Now they're hovering the Velkaz, and that's what's going to be locked in. The Velkaz versus the Zoe. And we know Yuki knows how to play against the Zoe because he plays it a lot. And now the Rek'Sai is going to be picked up for J-Riggs, which is going to be an interesting pickup here. We've seen him play Rek'Sai a little bit. It has worked. He has a gank several times, especially mid lane with this, so we're going to yep. see this work out in their favor. Yeah, and they, uh, J Riggs did pick that up in a Collegiate League of Legends uh, game, so he does have some experience on this, but for the most part, there are a lot of champions on IUPUI's side that they have not shown before in Collegiate League of Legends. Zoe is a first time pick for IUPUI. Um, Janna, uh, Shen. All three champions that IUPUI has not pulled out in any matches previously. So, um, what should be interesting to see? It is interesting to see. Ooh, and looks like they might lane swap actually. Yeah, Zadik might go mid, and Frodo Baguettes will head on to top lane yep. with the Shenny STP. So, so. We'll go ahead and throw it right back in here into the caster, the broadcast booth here at the eSports facility right here in Cervic Center on the Hard Rockers campus. Yep, and we do have a live viewing of this match just down the hallway in the Bump Lounge. If you want to get the full experience, you know, come by, say hello to the players after the match, um, the, the whole 10 yards. Talk to us. We're here until the end of the day here, and we have a great matchup for everyone here. We got the Urgot Shen matchup. That's going to get really confusing to me because I look I, when we look at this, we're always expecting the LCS order, right? Mm -hmm. You know, Shen, Rek'Sai, Zoe, Caitlyn, Janna. Well, this time they are going to lane swap with Frodo and 
um, Zadik. So Zadik's going to go mid, who does have a lot of time in mid. Yep. So yeah, both top and uh, mid laner for IUPI are actually mid lane mains. So mm-hmm. not the biggest um, lane swap ever. Putting Zadik in the mid lane, I think a position he's quite comfortable with by the looks of his match history. So. A um, couple of announcements. Wyatt and I have been working. Um, if you tuned in last year and watched the Hard Rockers through some of the season last year, they participate in the Rushmore Open League. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I have some exciting news. We are bringing that back. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. We're still working on yeah, it. Yeah, we're trying to secure some prize money, but it is on the horizon. It is It is looking like it's in the near future. Mm-hmm. And how many schools do, ha- do we have confirmed? Pretty much all of the schools that previously competed in the Rushmore Open League. So Last year. Montana State University, North Dakota State University, Colorado State University, uh, University of Colorado, Colorado Christian. You mean know. Colorado Springs? Colorado Springs, you, yeah. I Trust me, I've done, I did the same thing. It's when I first saw the UCCS, I thought it was University of Colorado, Colorado Christian. Nope, it's actually University of Colorado, Colorado Springs. Ah, uh, yeah. So, but... Yeah. If you have a school out there that's in the Midwest, Wyoming, North Dakota, Montana, Nebraska, or South Dakota, and you want to participate, we are. We still have some open slots. We would like to have a total of 16 teams coming on into this year's Rushmore Open League for the spring. Let Wyatt know, and we'll get you registered. So, And yep. if you know of anybody who is willing to get, give us some prize money, that would be awesome. So we're about 20 seconds away until we get into those beautiful loading screens. What what is the key matchup that we need to be watching here? I think it's going to be the top lane matchup, right? Because honestly, I w- I'm curious to watch all these matchups where um, IUPUI is pulling out new champions that we haven't seen before in terms of the scouting Hard Rocker Esports scouting reports. So top lane, mid lane, and bot lane. I'm excited to watch all three lanes. Yeah, I'm excited to see all three. I'm going to keep my eyes on this bottom lane, to be honest. Uh, I think mm-hmm. this bottom lane is going to be kind of the most interesting to watch, just because we haven't seen Lawrence play on a champion like Sivir before. We've seen him on Kai'Sa, we have seen him on Lucian, but we haven't seen him on Sivir yet, so we're just going to have to really find out here who is going to be the true, like, how is this going to work out? I think it does in, in, in the Hard Rocker's favor. Just because of the lane swap, uh, because of the distance. Come on. Nope. And we are jumping onto Summoner's there Rift here. There we go. That just about gave me cancer. There we go. And we are in, ladies and gentlemen. We have a great matchup for you here today, week three. Of the Collegiate League of Legends, Hard Rockers rank 24th. They are the higher seed this week. And a pause. And a pause right off the bat. So. I think it was a communi- uh, uh, communication issue. Yeah, I think. With undervalue. Yeah, it seemed like it was a microphone issue on the Hard Rocker Esports side. Go ahead and just flip that over. Let's just get rid of some of this stuff so we can't see all of it, you know. All right. There we go. So they're squaring that away, but we should be jumping back into game here momentarily. Anything, any Bruins popping out to you that is a little bit different building than what you expected? Um, yeah, let's take a look here. So we, I think pretty, I like the Halo Blades Zin Zhao decision by Void. Oh, but let's look at this early game invade. Hard Rocker Esports now. Heading towards this blue side. Ooh, and Caitlyn, I think they go relatively unnoticed. Yeah, they get they don't see him there. They know that there's two people there. And they actually might wrap around and get first blood here. There's it's a two V five. It's a two V five. The pink's coming on out. Oh, but they didn't notice the Caitlyn Janna until it was they were out of range of that death sentence. So Rek'Sai is going to start on his red on the red side, and we're going and the Hard Rockers are going to start the red on the blue side. Yep. So here we go. Red buff is going to be popping up in just a few seconds here, and we'll see kind of what is going on here. 
I gotta turn on the music for this. Come on. I already did this. Oh, there we go. It's like, it just sounds so bare without it. True. Oh. I, I, I turn those things off when I play. <laughs> Don't need no Don't need ambient, no ambient sound. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. There we go. Void picking up his red buff. He is going to rotate down. Probably going to get some wards out to try and track this Rek'Sai and also pick up his blue. His blue is completely open. They have it warded. He doesn't know what's happening right now. So an XP advantage. Whoa, what are you doing? Oh, my bad. What are you, what are you doing? <laughs> All right, so lane's starting off relatively safe. Um, exactly how you want them to start. No first blood yet. Nothing happening. Urgot is definitely trying to get this top lane frozen. Just make sure this Shen doesn't get a taunt off. But this Vel'Koz, Yuki, just proving why... He, He's one of the better mid laners in the sea lol right now. He did take cleanse, which is actually going to be really nice for that sleepy trouble bubble. Yeah, that's that's almost a must grab because in those mid to late game situations where you know getting picked off could mean a baron or an inhibitor, you really can't chance it. So I think a smart summoner spell by uh, Yuki on that Velkaz. And here we have it, just an early push here in the bot lane. A death sentence just flying wide from Moodles on that Caitlyn, but Lawrence able to return some poke despite that miss. Ooh, now an early gank here in the top lane. Flash will come out from undervalued, but this looks pretty well executed so far in a and flash auto by Frodo. So Lawrence lives there with just a sliver of health. And both top laners flashless. So that's going to be actually convenient now for both junglers. I mean, flash down now for five minutes. We won't see those flashes up until about eight minutes and 30 seconds into this game. So that will be a huge convenience now. And this Zoe has taken more damage than the Velka, So a lot of winning trade damage happening from the from Yuki. And now j Rix is going to get Void's... Blue buff, but here comes the Hail of Blades. You can see the Hail of Blades does a lot of damage there. And Velka's trying to rotate over. Zoe's rotating over. That could have been a, four, a 2v2 right there. But here comes Yuki oh. who gets first blood. And now the Hard Rockers are off to a great start in this game. And that is just great presence of mind by y Yuki. Knows that Rek'Sai is there. He's taking that blue buff able to find himself in a favorable position to pick up that kill. And now having blue buff on his side is going to just make him an annoying lane dominant champion. Ooh, and this Shen is getting poked dangerously low, so we're seeing undervalued already establishing some dominance there in the top lane. Pushing and forcing the Shen, going to have to recall soon. Yuki trying to do his best here. The Q is from Zoe, not hitting, but there's the Sleepy Trouble Bubble coming on out, but there's no Q. Now the Ignite comes out, and now Yuki flashes, and he tries to get away, but he goes down. Was Blue Buff still with him? He was, and now Void flashing away, but here comes Undervalue. All, you hear all the on-my-way pings. Frodo trying to get onto Void, and in, instead, Zer gets the kill, and now he gets a Sleepy Trouble Bubble. Here comes that Q, but doesn't hit. Undervalue. Just takes a little bit of damage, so he is going to live, but Yuki goes down, and he lost his blue buff, and Zoe now has a 450 gold bounty on him. But it's only a 500 gold advantage for IUPUI. Yep, only 500 gold so far, because that first blood was picked up, so a little bit of bonus gold on the Hard Rocker eSports side. See, bot lane is keeping the lane relatively pushed here. But yeah, so far, this Zoe is starting to ramp up two kills to her name. In and the return he, gank top lane, flashless ooh. undervalued. Looks like he will fall. And man, those Rek'Sai ganks are just lethal. Yep. So hard to get away. Those those Rek'Sai ganks are not going in the favor of the Hard Rockers. You can just tell. They'll have to start to readjust what their strategy is. 
part of it is, you know, just kind of getting those wards out, just making, just finding him. Um, uh, and I think we're, we're going to see um, IUPUI enter some areas of, you know, uncomfortability is the mid to late game. Because sure, uh, they're on some, they are on some champions that they're not used to playing. And that might be okay in the early games, you know, in the laning phase when things are relatively the same in terms of champion to champion. But when it comes to mid to late game, being on an uncomfortable champion or a champion you're not familiar with can have some pretty uh, negative outcomes. So we'll see how this game progresses and if IUPUI can make their team composition work as this game progresses. And here comes a gank from Void who tries to do some, but he's going to get Sleepy Trouble Bubble, and here comes the Shen. He uses his ultimate. He is not going... And it looks like Yuki is also going to go down a nice two-for-nothing kill there in the mid lane. But Zoe makes it out with her life, which is, like, yes. probably ten health. Sliver of health. Sliver of health. But that is okay. Now the bot lane, they're still doing all right. Uh, Lawrence is going to be down... 10 CS here. Yeah, and it looks like Rek'Sai is starting up that dragon, so let's pan the camera over, actually. Let's see what dragon... Oh, so an early win dragon looks like it will go to the side of IUPUI. But a lot of damage there from the dragon. Um, that was one of the biggest buffs, actually, in the jungle. Um... That doesn't benefit junglers. The, uh, the jungle camps now do a lot more damage to whoever's trying to kill them than previously. So a one a five to one kill advantage right now for IUPUI Jaguars. And man, this hard record esports is really going to have to figure out a solution for this mid lane because so far it's looking like things are going bad quite quickly with a three zero and one Vizoe something that can kind of snowball out of control if not given the proper attention. Yuki does have cleanse still, so if that were to happen, he could cleanse out. Yeah, the cleanse is back up, and we saw in that previous fight he used the cleanse for the ignite. So that is also an option to cleanse that ignite away for Zoe. Zoe's going to pick up the blue buff now. Ooh, that's going to get real annoying in lane. She does have a 600 gold bounty, but here comes the death sentence from Greg Nigman. Now the fight is on. A lot of damage happening on two nasty NATOs, and he is going to escape with his life, even though he does have the ignite on. Oh, oh and Lawrence flashes forward, gets the kill. Five to two now. Lawrence starting to pick up steam here, trying to get some damage onto this Kaylin back and get her to back off just a little bit. Void now has double buffs, which means he is going to be very dangerous. You might as well be careful here, Jay Riggs, and Jay Riggs is going to go ahead and just run away. He knows that that would be a bad situation for him. But now Void is going to be looking mid lane here. Zer Zertic is trying... Zotic, excuse me. I think it's yeah. Zadic. Zadic, yeah. I, I said it early in the stream. <laughs> but Zotic is going to do some pretty crazy here, I think. Oh, and here we have... J Riggs clearing some vision here in the top side, wanting to make sure. Another Q coming on through, doesn't land on the Yuki. And Lawrence now, he is down the flash, but what a play from Lawrence there to get onto the Janna. Yeah, that flash Q. So fla two, tr two flashes traded in the bot lane there. Yep. Actually, everyone in the bot lane flashless now. Yeah. And so Void is just sticking around mid, trying to get the Zoe to calm down. There is the Sleepy Trouble Bubble. Oh, and here comes the Shen ultimate. He does need to be careful. Actually, no, Shen doesn't ult in. Looks like a Shen ult, though. Might be just a cosmetic of the skin, but Moodle's taking some heavy damage now in the bot lane. Yuki trying to do his best here. Sleepy Trouble Bubble misses. And now Yuki is trying so hard to try and find some damage onto the Zoe. Now that Zoe is level 6, it makes it very difficult. Proto Baguette's trying his best. Try and push this top lane in. Another trouble bubble comes in, misses. And now he flashes forward. And now Yuki yeah, is going to go down again. A 4-0 with 90 CS. 700 gold bounty for Zotic. Another tr 
tornado comes through. Here comes Jay Riggs. Oh! oh! And he gets interrupted from the thresh ball, but he gets gonna get killed for it by Void. What a play by Jay Riggs there. Jay Riggs, 2,000 IQ right there. Oh, and the Fear Beyond Death misses there. He finds that kill, but they find, they do get the trade kill, so. Yeah, they do get that the does, trade that kill. That does feel good on the side of Hard Rocker Esports. So, woo! Some craziness happening right there. And four kills up and about 1,200 gold up. IUPUI find themselves. And we'll keep you updated with other scores happening around the North Conference today. Lots of games, uh, 40 games in our North Conference. So this is week three. Week three. So, you know, teams still trying to find themselves. A lot of, I mean, ha most of the teams, um, a lot of ties, a lot of ties, a lot of ties to be If you're not in the top 30 right now, you, to if you're not in the top 30 right now, you don't have a chance at playoffs. So no, I think it's like there's still some one in one teams that are at like um, 40th position. I think half of the teams already are dis are no chance at playoffs. And now Frodo Bag uh, Baguettes, excuse me, I gotta not say Frodo Baggins. But when every week, yeah, there's gonna be you know more and more teams not yeah. eligible for playoffs. So it's just trying to separate yourself from the field. And here comes J Riggs again to this mid lane. And the Sleepy Trouble Bubble coming up, but a nice flash. He uses the cleanse to escape. What a great play there by Yuki to avoid danger there. So, And that's what flash is really meant for, is to avoid danger, not to escape danger. So great, great play there. So flashes are going to be up soon for the bot lane. All four members of down there are going to have it. Turret plane will fall soon in about 30 seconds. And now Lauren's taking oh, a lot of damage. He gets Lawrence. knocked out by the t Tornado. The Ignite coming out from the Janna. And now another two kills going on down. It's now it's now two to nothing trade here. Now here comes Frodo Pickett's trying to do something here. And we're seeing uh, Yuki getting dis just kind of yeah, getting pushed just... in here. The, and now he is going to go down too. Zodic is now unstoppable. So now IUPUI starting to use that early game lead, really make it hurt with these jungle invades. And that is really becoming convenient. We are seeing this mid lane though game pushed in. No one's taking the tower. Oh, Dessa and misses. Dessa sentence is going to go wide. Gray Enigma just trying to dance around those traps. But let's go ahead and talk about the vision a little bit. Really good river wards by IUPUI. So they will be able to spot out um, most of Hard Rocker Esports, as they travel through the river, mostly trying to keep eyes on Void. So we're looking at this mid lane tower. That's going to go down next. Yeah, and let's, so. I'm curious what the gold difference in this mid lane looks like. And wow, it is surprise. Oh, never mind. Oh, okay, so this is Zoe about 2,500 2, gold ahead, a full item. Yeah, about 2,400. A full item up. Because, oh. yeah, it's always up there. That is a huge gold. So most of the gold lead that's in this game is on this Zoe. Zoe's definitely doing her work here. So now, Yuki just trying to stay in this game. You know, he is one and four. He is doing a great job, though, with keeping up with the CS. So, but a 900 gold shutdown is just a waiting on to the Zoe and Zodic and J Riggs are looking to gank bot here. And I feel like Lawrence and Greg Nigma know what's happening. Yeah, and they got to look out for those sleepy trouble bubbles. And it looks like IUPUI just going to be content with grabbing that first or that second tower so in the bottom lane. Two towers to zero towers right now. Undervalue is just doing a good job, just holding his lane here. He's only died once. So a little scrimmage. Yeah, there, just a little bit. There comes lane. the ultimate from Void, and 
And now Zodic is trying to get some done. Undervalued just poking out this Shen of Frodo Baguettes. He has not landed one taunt that I don't think of right now. Yeah. Ooh, and a pause going to be coming through. A fire alarm. Fire alarm. That is not good. Because now... Interesting. I'm not too sure how that's handled. Because we might need to pull in a, um, a C-Law admin. Yeah, maybe we should... Let's go ahead and get in touch with the admins. See what the protocol is for this. Gotta throw it back in the here. Oops. Don't want to show that. There we go. So we'll, we're going to be right back, ladies and gentlemen, while we figure out what the situation is and what how it's handled with the rulings. Sea Law has a bunch of just different rules about how the fire alarm uh, system works. All right, so... Yeah, let's go ahead. We'll run to a short, short break here, guys. We'll be right back, and we'll get you updated.
was happening. Oh, yeah. And welcome on in, back in, ladies and gentlemen, right here at the Hard Rockers Esports Facility right here at South Dakota School of Mines. So the pause is now done due to the fact that we have a spectator delay of three minutes. We will have to wait. Uh, there was a fire alarm that was pulled off at, the, at IUPUI, and one of their players had to evacuate for the time being. Uh, the admins ruled it. Um, it did go past the 10 minutes um, that they are allowed for t uh, pauses, but due to the fact it was an uncontrolled circumstance, the admins have ruled to give them 20 minutes, and they have actually have come back into the game with two minutes to spare. Yep. So we are going to go ahead and just let them, uh, uh, the admins, I thought did a very good job there. So thank you very much, admins, for the ruling on that. And we will get underway. Uh, right now, it is a 4,000 gold, just right, right under 4,000 gold advantage for IUPUI. So, yep. we'll just give it a couple minutes here for the pause to get done, and then we'll get back in. That was, um, I thought, you know, very transparent on both sides to so just let them know. Not a lot of people know that rule that. Um, you can only pause for 10 minutes, and that's what it says in the rule books. The teams are only allowed 10 minutes pauses. It doesn't say if yep. it's a fire alarm, we'll give it this much. Um, so thank you very much to the Sea Law admins for the North Conference for clarifying any sort of ruling like that. So let's see here. It's about another minute before we get back yep. in. I'm so. going to go let the admins know yep. the situation. So I'll go ahead. Let's update everybody in week three now. I'm going to switch this. Uh, University of Cincinnati goes to uh, over Illinois College right now underway. Columbia College is 1-0 over Michigan Technology. Robert Morris is 1-0 right now over Illinois Tech. Ohio University is went 2-0 over Oklahoma. And University of Minnesota Duluth goes 2-0 over Marita. What is that? I can't read that name. I'm not going to try. Manchester University Gaming Society goes 2-0 over Prince, Principia College Esports. And Univ uh, University of Northern Iowa Purple Team goes 2-0 over University of Notre Dame. So lots of games happening. Like I said, there are 40 games happening right now. Lots of teams still in this. So, And we are going to get underway here any minute now, I promise. I keep yep. saying that. <coughs> the, so. the oh, here comes another uh, another update. St. Ambrose University is five one, minute stream delay. Uh, is one uh, one zero over University of Pikeville. So and now we are into the game, and we are back. Hard Rocker Esports taking on IUPUI Jaguars. The Jaguars. A lot better than last week than Uni University of Was no, Washington University St. Louis Bears. Oh my lord. Yeah, it's just like a mouthful. Just a mouthful. This would have been a mouthful to say if they didn't have some form of abbreviation. Like, yeah, like <laughs> reasonable acronym. And I want to give uh, Coach Larson a shout-out for teaching Wyden I how to say that at the luncheon last Tuesday. Yeah, that was great. That was great. He was actually – so Coach Larson, our women's basketball coach, was used to compete in the same athletic conference as IUPUI. So small world. Small world, so – and they are at, at the basketball is at uh, Colorado State University Pueblo today. The women won last night against Highlands, New Mexico Highlands, and the men's lost to New, to New Mexico Highlands last night. But a very good game, a high scoring game. So, yep. All right, and we are still going here. The gold is starting to somewhat shrink just a little bit. It's just like I said, right over three thousand. So, another tornado coming in on in about another th two minutes while for this rift herald to be up. Yeah, and ooh, the sleepy trouble bubble going to land on the gray enigma there. Not too much is going to come from that, but it looks like J Riggs started up the rift herald. Have to see. I think he will be able to grab that one. And he will be able to. The, uh, the Heart Rockers just didn't have any vision on it. So, But now 
Voigt trying to do something here, and he gets pulled back by Greg Nigma. Nice save there. And now they're going to be able to try and contest this Rift Herald. So lots of damage coming on out. They do get on to the J onto J Riggs, but it isn't enough. And he is just yeah. trying to escape with his life here. Lots of flashes going out. Nasty Noids destroys Void. Protobag gets he gets on the Lawrence. And, and that was a four for nothing team fight there. And what made the difference there was the top lane difference. The Shen TP'd onto the Rek'Sai kind of as a delivery system and then all of a sudden, hey, their front line is in your face and that gave IUPUI's backline the opportunity to move forward and they just wiped Hard Rockers off. And now here comes that tier one top now gone. All three tier ones for the Hard Rockers are now officially down. So lots of gold bounties out there. The Zoe is worth 900. Yeah, and they're just making some great use of this Rift Herald. And the uh, Rek'Sai is worth 600. Shen's worth 450. And the Caitlyn is now worth 500. So, lots of bounties out there. They got to be careful, though, I think IUPUI does, because... One team fight can mean the matter of an objective and lots of gold swinging in the direction of the hard rockers. Exactly. Yeah, if we get like a four for, if we get an ace, look at all those bounties that suddenly the hard rocker esports collects. So, and that would actually almost even up the gold. Yep. So they really got to be looking to try to get some shutdowns here. We have like three different monitors that we're watching everything on. And yep. I'm just, I'm so surprised at how synced up this one is that we're watching right now. Kind of yeah, keeping so an eye on everything. Hard Rockers do have some pretty good vision around the dragon, so. And they are going to deny them that vision, but now they know where they're at. They are, they are seeing that. Wait, right, is an ocean dragon, so it will give bonus health, health and mana health. regeneration. So apparently Hail of Blades Rek'Sai is very strong right now, so he's played this a lot now. Yeah, and man, Hard Rockers is just having a really hard time grabbing any objectives. I mean, still three towers standing. I don't know if we've really done any damage to either of these. Just a little. A uh, little, little bit of minion yeah. damage, maybe. Yeah. All right, so the Siege now focused into the mid lane. Zoe just doing what Zoe does, spamming. Just spam, spam, spam. And, and they have a, it. they actually, IUPUI has a really good Siege composition with that Caitlyn and with that Zoe. It's just so hard to walk up. You might step on a Caitlyn trap. You might get hit by a Zoe bubble. Really, the, so many weapons for IUPUI in situations just like this for them to excel. And there we see Bubble yep. landing in oh! the one shot. And now Boy, Void just is, barely yeah. stays alive. Ace in the hole coming on through, but good block by Undervalue is going to keep him alive. He's going to go back down with his tail between his legs there. That was uh, I can't believe the Zoe threaded that through. Yeah, that was that was a little that was a little scary. I will say another death sentence misses. Great, make my. I'm not landing a lot of those today. Yes. And when he does, it always turns up in a very bad situation. So, yeah, and we even saw at that Rift fight, he threw a death sentence and hit the Rift Herald. Yeah, and he the Caitlyn didn't really even move too much. So, yeah, the Caitlyn's not scared. And um, back back two years ago, when you played Caitlyn, you, di you didn't want to play her super aggressive. You wanted to be back a little bit and not, like, die to her. Mm-hmm. You know, and not die. That was kind of the whole point of Caitlyn, just not to die. Because if you fell behind with Caitlyn, it was over. I mean, you just, it was so hard for her to get caught up. But now it's like, nope, I, she doesn't have to worry about that. <laughs> she can just step up, do a lot of crit damage. I mean, now with the marksman items being redone, IE has its original build back with crit. Mm -hmm. So... So now the siege continues, and Baron on the map, so that is an opportunity for IUPUI. And wow, this Zoe harass is just, all, just way too just strong. relentless. Wow. They are trying to, the Hard Rockers, they're trying just to find ways just to kind of 
keep him pushed back here. Another attempt at a taunt from Frodo does not happen. Like I said, I don't think he's landed many taunts. Yeah, and this is just not looking that great. I mean, just look at the items across the Hard Rocker Esports. The Urgot is only sitting on one item at 23 minutes with a health crystal. I mean, if you consider boots an item. Oh, okay, there we go. He just had a really big recall. I was about to say. Wow. I was about to say that you're pretty far behind if only sitting on a black cleaver at 23 minutes. But goes recalls, picks up some additional items there. Will help definitely help him out against that Shen. But this has been a pretty clean match for IUPUI so far. Very and it clean. really it really started early on, uh, capitalizing on the mistakes of Hard Rocker Esports. So yep, not not putting down the wards, not grouping early enough. So so we're seeing here what's going to happen here with the Hard Rockers. See if they can maybe come back in this game. I mean, it is only mid game, so it's not super late yet. Which yeah. means that the Hard Rockers still have a chance to capitalize on any mistakes that IUPUI, the very few mistakes that I, IUPUI have. And it is, I mean, Hard Rocker Esports, this is a scaling composition, right? I mean, you're looking for the Velkaz and the Sivir to really show up at this 30, 30, 35 minute mark. It's just whether or not we can make it to that point. So the battle for vision will continue. Hard Rocker Esports cleared some of those wards out of the blue side jungle, and that will help them feel a little bit more secure walking through and clearing out towards the Baron. So J Riggs there now coming through, clearing out those wards that Hard Rocker Esports just cleaned. And it looks like they might just try to... S no, they're... They're, they're just they clearing were, out wards. Yeah, yeah they're they were, they were really thinking about it, but they're like, no, they know we're here. They can contest it. You know. Yeah, and their team. I mean, they don't really have too many damage dealers there. Yeah, the Caitlyn could come down, but I don't think that's going to be enough. Yeah, it won't. I they, need, they need like a full team at this point to take Baron, unless they have the Heimerdinger. <laughs> that's the. <laughs> that's the secret shot, that's ladies the and gentlemen. Strategy. Just have Heimerdinger and some like heavy damage jungler and do Baron in 20 minutes uh, every game. <laughs> every game, I you you will win. I promise. Take it from Wyatt and I, who have done it maybe 20 times now. <laughs> yep. So now they're on the Baron. Uh, hard Rockers are trying to find a way in here, but I don't think they're going to try and contest it. And oh. a blue buff. Oh my lord! That Stolen is... away, and then on oh. top of that. Oh. Wow, the Zoe is just having a heyday. I think this is the best Zoe game he's had in a while. Now the Baron is going to go down. The Velkaz has Luden's Echo now. He is working on Morello's. Yuki is. Oh, and Yuki just takes another chunk of damage here. That is what Zoe can do best. Right now, Zoe has Luden's Morello's. That is so annoying. And yeah. now she is worth a thousand gold. What would you do with for, with a thousand gold? Me? Yeah. I have no idea. Well, we're seeing the inhibitor yeah. tower going on down. They are pushing onto the inhibitor. They do have a cannon minion, and now they got onto the Zoe. This might be her time, and she oh the shutdown goes down. Thank God, Lawrence picks it up too. And now here comes Moodles is trying to do something here. Now they're on the J rigs. And he was going to try and escape with the tunnel. He flashes forward. And just a great fight there from the Hard Rockers. Like I said, they could have got the... Oh, and a double kill now. That two. is a three for zero. That is two for zero. Oh, two me. for zero. They did not get... j, -Riggs j -Riggs. just barely got away. But a couple of shutdowns coming on out. Yep. So now the tides have turned there. Now that instead of the 14,000 gold down that they were, they are close to now just right over 11,000. So... Nice fight there from the Hard Rockers. They took out two people there. And now we're really starting to see their comp actually build here. Now they just have to defend this, their base for another probably three minutes. Is how long that inhibitor? Uh, no, another four minutes with that inhibitor being down. When did that inhibitor go down? About 27. So... 
Yeah, another four minutes and then that inhibitor, that mid lane inhibitor will be back up. But we have seen situations, we've been in these kind of situations where you have one inhib down and you defend it. Yeah. And you just, you know. It's just hard because you have to give up, you know, Elder, Baron, yep, pretty you just, much everything. Yep, you, you, give up, you give up objectives. In but, your own jungle. Yeah. But if they get a couple more kills here, you know, they get a couple picks like they just did. They could, could get very well back into this match. I mean, they're only just right under 11,000 gold down. But they do. They are looking to try and get this bottom inhibitor. Ooh, and a nice chunk of damage happening onto Void. And it looks like this mid lane inhibitor, or this bottom lane inhibitor is going to go down. So now they got to wait. Now it's a total of nine minutes, uh, seven, eight minutes to get any inhibit back up. Both inhibitors back up totally. Now they are just trying their best here just to try and keep going. They are yep. just not looking that strong yet. Oh, and this is not <laughs> cool. They are just they trying. They are actually spotted out by a ward there, so. And they don't see it. Yep. I don't think, yep, hard archers are not going to fall for that one. But I think they're gonna have a hard time defending this. I mean, the front line from IUPI is just so efficient with the Shen. And now the Regis Glory come on out. And here comes the final team fight we're probably gonna see tonight. And here we go, Frodo Baggins goes on a killing spree. Lawrence trying to back on out of there. He uses the spell shield, trying to just throw as much damage as he can out. But here comes the nail from the Janna. Janna just, now they're just trying to run away. Yuki trying to get as much damage out, out there. Here comes Ace and Hold, does not kill anybody. Yep, weren't able to grab a kill with that one. And now we're seeing this gold just take even more and take off more and more here. 30 minutes into this game, and all we're seeing is now the Morellos finally coming out from the Velkaz for Yuki, and that's just not enough items or enough damage to get anywhere, especially against this very heavy team. Lots of tanks, lots of people who can be in the front line. Six and two, Zoe. Four and two, Rek'Sai, and a two and zero, oh, Caitlyn. Sixteen to six, so they're ten kills behind. So they got a lot of work. That they do, and, and all three inhibs are down. Yeah, so Hard Rocker Esports really just confined to their base. There's not a whole lot that can happen, and it just makes it so difficult as you move forward. Because in a minute, that next Baron is going to be up. And let's see, what's the next dragon? It's another wins. Oh, another? Okay. So that's not, that's not, that's the least of the worries, I'd say. Hard Rocker Esports, yeah. though, I mean, they're, on the bright side, they're getting all this gold funneled right to their base. You know? Yeah, might as well just take advantage of it while you can and see if you can do anything. And here is another Janna Tornado, and it just lands. She has been landing those all night. Here comes. Uh, Zadik, and he's trying to do something oh, here. And here really comes good stopwatch. a nice stopwatch happening. The ultimate, the fear beyond death, misses on the Urgon. Now they're going to go after J Riggs, and J Riggs might go down, and he does finally a shutdown. But the sleepy trouble bubble from Zoe gets onto the on, onto undervalue, and now here comes the Shen. He is tanking both towers. He's taking a lot of damage here, and he is going to go down, taken but. down by the turrets. Now it's only Yuki alive here who can do a lot of damage now but Zoe is still up Zodic is trying to do some here he does a chunk of damage to the to the Janna but it's just not enough and the GG is coming on out IUPUI Jaguars take game one of this best of three that they do in a GG to IUPUI Hard Rocker Esports going to be looking to bounce back but before we hop into game two we're going to jump to a quick break so yep give us about five minutes to get reset here actually 10 minutes to get reset here and we'll be back with game two of this best of three collegiate league of legends week three
All right. And we are back. We are back for game two of this best of three series. Your thoughts of your of that last match? Uh, things just went wrong early and just continue to go wrong for Hard Rocker Esports. So I think they have to, you know, understand what these matchups do before they walk into lane and, you know, don't be caught off in how these trades are going to proceed. You know what I mean? So we'll have to see. I think there was a point in the game where Hard Rocker Esports has to know when to stop the bleeding, right? Yep. And say, okay, we're... We gave up some early kills here, but that's going to be that. And the rest of our kills are, the rest of our um, plays are going to try to be more towards a 50-50 play. So, Hard Rocket Esports, though, falling down in game one, going to be trying to bounce back game two. But last week they were, they went down in game one, bounced back in game two, got the win in game two, take it to a three-game series. So let's see if they can do that this week. As they are getting ready here, the Hard Rockers are ready, and we're just waiting on IUPUI Jaguars to say that they're ready. By the way, let's show them this graphic that you made. Look at this beautiful graphic that Wyatt made. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I have time, to Michael. say, you do a great job by getting this whole week, this this the one day <laughs> all ready to go. There's so much that goes into game day preparation, plus um, the whole week of um, – of practice then also we have to get ready for the broadcast and here we go game number two yep jumping to game two here IUPUI once again going up one win now we are on red side that means IUPUI will get first pick and they're going to stick with that Trindamere I, I, I don't know what they're thinking with yeah. this Trindamere we don't they have quite Brett clearly, back. Yeah, Brett is not playing. Okay, that's the only time <laughs> Trindamir has been brought. But now the Kane's going to be banned away to Lee Sin for IUPUI. That's actually kind of nice to say, IUPUI. It's kind of yeah, catchy. It kind of rolls off the tongue after yeah. you. Yeah. So credit for them for having a great abbreviation. Now the Kane going to be taken away. So Lee Sin, Kane, and Trindamir. Morgana going to be taken off the table now. It would not surprise me to see here what's going to happen. Is Zodic going to go back mid, or is it going to be Frodo Baguettes? So that now the, the question. Karthus taken off the table. So two two junglers gone. Part of me thinks this Trinimir ban is just because Trinimir does now have a lot better scaling with the new crit items. Yep. So... And now the Fiora are going to be taken off the table. Like we said last match, um, last game, that the Fiora's has played a lot. And here comes the Zoe again. The Zoe worked out in their favor. So now here comes the pick. Just about 10 seconds remaining in this first pick for the Hard Rockers. Yep, we'll have to see what they're thinking here. And now they're going to pick up the Braum. Braum is here. That will go down. And now they're going to pick the ADC. And they are going to pick up Kaylin, which also worked out in the favor of IUPUI. So this is actually looking quite nice. The Braum, Kaylin, bot lane. So now, now J Riggs is, is up. He's pro they're probably going to be looking for an ADC here. Now that they know what the Hard Rockers ADC is. Oh, they're going to pick up the Janna instead. Okay, so Caitlyn on Hard Rocker Esports side this time around. I like that. Yeah, I really like that too. I think it will work just well. And now the Ezreal going to be picked up for Frodo, well, for Moodles. So now we see the bot lane and the mid lane all set up here. So now we're just seeing here. I don't know what the Hard Rockers are thinking about picking here next. They are. Yeah. It looks like Yuki's going to hover that Yasuo, and they're going to pick up the Yasuo, which is a great pick into the Zoe. Yeah, the Wind Wall will come through. 
to try to prevent as many of those sleepy trouble bubbles as possible. And, Yuki and then just is, the crit items buffs yeah. helped out Yasuo a ton. Yep, Yuki is very good. Now the Cassiopeia going to be taken off the table. So definitely don't want to see that Cassio top lane. And I'm guessing this Zoe um, Zodic is going back mid. Yep. I'm thinking so. It might go to Frodo, who might go mid, but the Pantheon could be taken off the table. They are not hitting the mark on these bands, I don't think. No, I don't really think so either. It's like they didn't do enough scouting. They're just going off the meta. And now the Shen also going to be taken off, which is absolutely... Actually, that did a lot of work for them last game. Very tanky, can roam, can teleport, like double TP, you know, have mm -hmm. the Shen ult and then have TP. That's actually pro strat probably i haven't seen much shen much in the pro scene so seven seconds for this last ban for the jaguars Who and now the ergot gonna get taken off the table so they're like all right if you want to take the shen we'll just take off your ergot yep so little little bm there All right, so the he Teemo hover. They're not thinking the Teemo. Please don't. This is not Iron Solo Q. Please, yeah. hell no. Now the Jarvin going to be picked up for the Void. Jarvin's actually really good. I like it, yeah. Whole lot of burst. Really good team fighter and uh, a great ganker as well. So they might be looking for the jungle here. Now they're hovering the Mordekaiser? Ah, no, they wouldn't do this. Please, no. Where don't want... Mordecai's are top, top possibly. Top, I mean, top. they do have a game up, so the, the you know, they in a could position where it. they could flex around. So now it's going to be the Jax being locked in, and now here is Nasty Nodes. Um, that Jax could be like a jungle or top. Ooh, and now they're just. <laughs> we were watching the chat earlier, and they, these IUPUI, all respect to them, and they are going to get the Rexi again. Which yeah. I don't think it did as much Relatively, damage. Relatively, honestly, I feel like they're completely different play style they're approaching here, right? Yeah. Because Shen, great, great uh, team fighter, global. Yep. Uh, now that's all going to change here with this Jax. They're going to be looking for this Jax to, you know, push, 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 cause a lot of pressure, draw a lot of pressure top lane or whichever lane he's in. So I'm and interested to see how they're going to approach this change in play style. And now the Malphite going to be locked in for undervalue. So that's actually a very good pick. So this is a team fight oriented comp. Very strong. Very snowball-y too. Yeah, like this, um, you know, you have the Malphite knockup. You have the Yasuo knockup. So, you know, if they, if you get a five-man knockup here with, with, two of, with two out of the f five champions yep. on the map, you could... The Yasuo could come in handy. Mm -hmm. So the Caitlyn also going to come very much in handy to stay in that back line. Just get on to these guys. So I'll go ahead and turn that music off. And we'll throw it right back in here into the broadcast booth. Once again, my name is Adam EV500. Joining me, the eSports coordinator of the Hard Rocker eSports team, Wyatt Sox Boy 3 Ingle. So, Wyatt, yep. we have another matchup here. We are seeing game Frodo two. go back up top. Um, and kind of. our playoff hopes rely on this game. Yep, the I playoff think. hopes. Um, this is a, one of the hardest conferences to be playing. In case you don't know, in this conference, there is Robert Morris University, Columbia College, and Maryville University. All three of those teams have won national championships and have been to the finals several times for the past four years Two teams from the North Conference have made it to the, the to the national bracket. So this is obviously one of the toughest conferences you can be a part of. Yep. So we are very lucky. We uh, The Hard Rockers currently are ranked 24th in the standings, and I don't know where IUPUI st stood at, so we'll check. Let me check here. They were, like, towards the bottom of the table, I think. Oh, yeah. Let's do the, let's do the giveaway now. Oh, yeah. Forgot about that. Thank you for reminding us, chat. One second here. I want to see. Where did IUPUI? They're ranked 57th. So now it's time for the diamond giveaway. 
All right, so let's have everyone in the Twitch chat. So let's talk about the diamond giveaway. So basically, it's just usage hours for our esports practice facility. Um, diamond package being the most hours that you can have. Um, most most players that are or people that are entering this competition know this spiel. So let's go ahead. And, and no, it's not a free boosting service. So yeah, no. <laughs> to time it. Hit up Dan, uh, Adam. Hit, hit up that. me if you want a boosting service. I'll show you how to boost. So let's have those in the chats. Select a number, one through ten. One through ten. You heard the man. And I just showed Adam the number on my hand. So we'll see if anyone in the chat gets it correct. So, and we're gonna put one minute on the clock. Yeah, so you got a minute. On the clock. You got a minute to do that. One. 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 One full minute. Which so. started now, so hurry up, chat. Oh, but there is a stream delay. Oh no, I forgot about the There's stream, stream delay. delay. All right. Oh. So we'll we'll keep an eye on the chat though. We'll keep an eye yeah, on it. Yeah, we have the chat up here, so Yeah, so oh. we, you guys won't actually be seeing this until three minutes later. But <laughs> that's okay. Or that's two a, minutes. Two, two minutes. minutes. Yeah. Two minutes. Uh, that's tilting. <laughs> that's just how it be sometimes. Just like our games last night, very tilting. That's just how League of Legends <laughs> be sometimes. I tell you what, when you get in the same game, you have two AFKers. It's just... And you almost win 3v5. Yeah, I mean, we won a team fight 3v5. Yeah, yeah we won game. a team fight. You're welcome for the carry that game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was playing Nocturne. I, I keep telling Wyatt here, I'm one of the probably I'm probably one of the best Nocturne players, probably one of the best junglers in Iron right now. Yeah. Just because I can at least do something yeah. instead of just farm. Except I did do a lot of power farming last night. That strat did not work. Yeah, you gotta prioritize kills and low elo. Yeah, you gotta just... prioritize. I tried the power farm. I just wanted to build Blade of the Ruin King right away. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, I do not want to wait around for this. I just want so to get this. We're loading up into the match, and I'm curious what type of. Uh... Oh my god! I no, just my... I think we there can... we go. Okay, there we go. I was like, where are my hotkeys? Sweet. Um, hold on, let me switch these real quick for us. We always forget this, even at Rushmore Open League, we forgot. Yeah, until the game starts. Yeah. Okay. All right, now you got to get back. <laughs> ah! All right. And it looks like we are ready to go. Once again, IUPY up one win. So all I have to do is get this game to close this out. Hard Rocker Esports looking to bounce back. And we will just have to see how that battle goes. And now, and we got about 30 seconds until the giveaway time is over. We'll announce the winner during the match. Okay, got some numbers there. Get a couple numbers in there. We'll give it some time. Yeah, we'll give it some time. We should have we should have said like five minutes. <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> I just tilted chat by accident. Whoops! I'm sorry, guys. Right, so I'm excited to see, you know, wh what the strategy is going to be in this game. Ooh, I don't know. He did say the JK. No JKs. Okay. No JKs. Sorry, man. No JKs. Deleted. Reported. Deported. <laughs> <laughs> Can't even do that, man. Both sides starting on the red side. Uh, this is the first time we're seeing the Jarvan come out for the Hard Rockers. How, uh, yep. Void has been talking about how actually how good it's going to be, and I actually believe him. We've, I've been seeing a lot more Jarvan games and how powerful it can be. Yeah, Jarvan is really good. Uh, does a whole lot of things well. So I'm excited to see how that is in the jungle compared to the previous game. Ooh, and an early, early, an early kill game. attempt. Could yeah. have... Ooh. See, this is why the Yasuo is so good against the Zoe. So, yeah. So, as this laning phase continues to go on here, I am going to announce the winner of the Diamond Package. And by the way, 
Yoda Nader 98. You can't give us two numbers and say JK. I'm sorry. We're sorry, Yoda Nader. Sorry, Yoda Nader. But the winner is Manly Joe. He was the closest to our number. So yeah, we won't he is. So congratulations, Joe. You just won the diamond package. So, and I promise you, I'm not trying to tilt you. You actually won. You are the grand prize winner. So congratulations. <laughs> And um, after this match, come on by the broadcaster's booth, and, and that we'll get you set up. Yep. As some of you may know, Joe and I don't have the biggest relationship. I like to tilt him because he tilts me somehow. Yeah. But <laughs> it's all right. Congratulations, Joe. You earn it. So, But now Yuki, once again, just he's just... Just dashing in, dashing out. Dashing Doing in. what Yasuo does best. Yep. And it's not a typical Yasuo player. It's not solo queue Yas. It's actual good Yas, but... A lot of just trade damage happening here for the top lane, and it's working. So we are just definitely seeing these lanes are actually going 10 times better as they were last game, except eh, maybe the CS difference. Yep. Wow, Frodo Baggett goes in for a Q there. And it's not going to work out well. He is going to dodge away. He does stun up undervalue. Oh, and First Blood gives goes on over to uh, Zork, but here comes Yuki. He gets one. Now it's a two to one kill streak now. And this is the first time the Hard Rockers actually get a lead here. Yeah. And now the tornado coming on out from the Aswa, from Yuki. Yep. He isn't level six and though, he's so. Getting that CS lead already a full wave ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I love Twitch chat though. I'm so glad this is not the LCS Twitch chat. And a sleepy trouble bubble happening onto Yuki. But undervalue doing a good job here, just keeping his lane, just pushing and having a lot of pressure. He does have a he's a kill up now. And they were able to take out J Riggs, who was really good on this Rek'Sai last game. So now double buff is on Zoe. He she does have the blue and red buff. Yeah, much of the same in this bottom lane, you know. Hard Rock is pushing in. Ooh, oh, and early, a nice dash. Ignite coming out from Zadik there. So but Yuki able to get away. He does have his flash, so good job holding on to the flash there. And Yuki is actually going to try and go in for this. I don't blame him, Peach. He doesn't have flash. And oh, and a, and a trouble bubble misses. He missed. Oh, oh he it finds it and gets the double buffs. But now he's got to try to juke and dodge around this wreck side. And wow. he does so successfully. Good job, Yuki. And I keep saying Yuki is probably one of the... He is a really good Yasuo player. I, we, I have watched him play this Yasuo a few more, um, more times than I would like to see Yasuo play. So, good for him. Now, Proto Beg uh, Baguettes is now taking more damage. Yo, it's not your time yet, yo. We, we said after the game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's all right. <laughs> so, Proto Baguettes doing a good job here. Just trying to stay in lane, but he is taking so much damage. Yeah, Joe's so excited he wants to start using <laughs> his time now. Yeah, he's like, the diamond package. The diamond package. It's mine. But again, I don't blame him. I don't I mean, blame him. I, want, I wish I had the diamond package. I mean... <laughs> 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 I bought all these computers. <laughs> I mean, don't you? <laughs> don't you get just unlimited access all the time? Yeah. Well, so. yeah. <laughs> I play from home, actually. I actually rarely ever play in the facility. Because I have, like, a dog, right? And yeah, you have you know, a dog. It's like having a child. We should actually play in the facility sometime. I, I wouldn't mind trying that out. That would be fun. That'd like, be fun. have, like, a four- or five-hour gaming session. Yep. It's not a diamond boost, okay? <laughs> okay, Joe? <laughs> All right, so a really good cue by Lawrence there. Lands it on both of them. But congrats, Joe, for winning that. Joe, is, I forgot how you say his last, last name. You say Powell. That's oh, last, no, that's no. first name. It's Klinger. Klinger, yep. Yeah. Joe Klinger, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry, why did <laughs> Joe Powell. <laughs> no, it's just. We're, you can tell it's a long day for us. We're, we're here soon. We're here early. I actually day. like Joseph. What? Joseph. Maybe. I Are you know. back on those paint heads, <laughs> man? What <laughs> is going on? J-Rig's now going to take some more damage, and Boyd takes him down. And wow, J Riggs having a rough one this time around. Wow, yeah, J Riggs is now 0 and 2. He can't believe what just hit him. So another NATO from Nasty NATOs. So 
in front of Baguettes. I don't know what he's doing. Oh, oh and a nice ultimate coming from <laughs> undervalued. And this, oh, man. This game is definitely going way smoother. Yeah. So. This is what you wanted to see from Hard Rocker Esports. And they just got to keep this up. You know, keep these advantages alive. Maybe even try to pick up an early dragon here. Yep, and they can now. They have a lot of priorities in the um, in the bot and mid lane. But now I think yes, I think Yuki actually um, is like trying to make sure nothing happens here. Now we're seeing some pinks come out. They say, "Hey, Yasmo's over here. You want to try and kill him?" But they don't. Um, they spot him out. J Riggs is probably one of the best junglers, um, probably at uh, IUPUI. He is a master tier player. Yeah. I mean, he's very good. He's actually probably one of the highest levels you can hit. Mm -hmm. um, right Well, right now, it's the only... Yeah, I mean, he's high. in the top thousand yeah, so he's players probably, in the United States. So. Yeah, he's probably playing, um, you know, players who play in the LCS and the Academy. Yep. Because uh, Grandmaster and Challenger have not officially opened yet, so... No, Grandmaster is open. Oh, Grandmaster is... Yeah. Yep. Just not, Challenger isn't. Yep. So here we go, Lawrence... Just trying to keep ahead of this um, Ezreal. Another NATO coming on out. Doesn't actually hit this time. And the ultimate from Ezreal is now down. That's actually going to come in handy. Ezreal also doesn't have heal. While the bot lane still have both their flashes and the heal in Ignite. So. so let's take a look at the vision. We see Hard Rockers do have that uh, scuttle around the Dragon Pit. That's nice. And, uh, so this is the red side. Yeah, undervalued has everything warded there on the top side of the map. So that's looking great. And this is what blue side looks like. Not a lot of wards. They got a control ward on the blue. And that's really it. Oh, oh then they have a vision on the bush in mid lane going to the top side. So not a, not a whole lot of vision. But here comes J-Riggs. He's going to knock up undervalued. Well, undervalued goes tries to do some here. He does knock them both up, but I think he is going to go down here. The ultimate coming out from the wreck side. Undervalue trying to do something here. The flash forward from J Riggs. Oh, oh, and he almost escaped with his life, but J Riggs is just too good. So one and two and one now for J Riggs. Kind of just overextended a bit there. And oh my gosh, this is. Yuki, what are you doing, my friend? And now Void's going to go down, so. And that is just How? a tragic turn of events. There that was a fight line. not worth taking, I don't think. So now yeah, they just went in with such low health bars, just completely disrespecting the the potential for IUPUI to just turn on them and feel the confidence. So five to four kill score right now, and just a thousand gold difference. And Moodle's just doing a lot of damage here. Okay. Yeah, Moodle's doing a lot of damage. Blue buff picked up by Zadok there in the mid lane. This this bot lane has actually been very entertaining to watch. I think it's going in the favor of the Hard Rockers. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if we see Lawrence back here and finish up Storm Razor. No, that's not. Yeah, I think yeah. they switched the build path. I don't know if Stormraiser is actually what you want to be building first. I think you. I think now it's um. Both Stormraiser is kind of irrelevant. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, we can check that right now. Actually. Yeah, well, let's go ahead and check out what the primary builds are. Can you actually not look at the shop and spectator? Dude, no. tilted. I guess not. Guess not. Well, I guess we'll find out. And Yuki doing a lot of damage here. Now the Zoe trying to find a way, but he is just... Just so slippery, jumping all over the place. Now we're sitting at the five. <laughs> we're evened up at five kills apiece now. Yep, and here we go. Now they're onto the Mountain Drake. Last game, the Hard Rockers did not get a single dragon. But now they're going to actually pick up their first dragon of this matchup, and it's a Mountain Drake, which is going to help. But now they might pay for it. And they oh, do. They're going to pay for it in a huge way. Oh, and Lawrence get out out of there. And the tornado comes out. The flash comes out over the wall. And I think he's going to live. The ignite came out. So that's an ignite wasted. Yeah, and the Zoe's just going to 
go ahead, collect all those flashes that are laying on the ground, flash on in. And now the Rift Herald was picked up. IUPUI, you know, they 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 fell behind early, and the Hard Rockers are not going back to that same kind of aggressive style. They're just like, no, we can't be aggressive here. And then when they get aggressive, it's just a bad team fight. Yep. And it looks like pretty good roam bot lane. They are trying to knock down, grab this first tower. We'll see if Hard Rockers are going to be able to force them off. Now we're just back to another lull stage. Um, looks like Rek'Sai is going mid, and not a whole lot there. You know, Yuki, pretty confident that he was going to get away there, and he does. You know, and that's the only lane that, uh, bot lane is the only lane that has one turret plate left, and now 30 seconds until turret plates will fall, which is actually really nice for the Hard Rockers. They... I think they would prefer the turret plates to go go away after um, here in the next 15 seconds so they can yep. at least push something. Their comp is built around that. They can actually do a lot of sieging here and a lot of damage to these towers. Okay, canceling the recalls. Gotta try your best here. Man, so I'm gonna have another drink. But well, it's all right. Yeah. Frodo Baguette's trying just to do something to undervalue, and the Rek'Sai Rek is not near, so undervalue just can just get right up on him. So now we're just watching J Riggs is coming back, man. Ooh, and he that takes a burst. Lot. One just, combo just takes the yeah. full health bar, and I don't know if a good flash from Yuki, actually, but I think he is eventually going to fall to the Zoe. And there, another kill. A good rotation from uh, Janna as well. Yeah, they, they are communicating to each other on a whole nother level. So we're only 15 minutes in, though. A lot can happen early game. A lot can happen late game. Oh, and another nice knockup from Undervalue. He uses his ult to try and just get this Jax just to leave him alone. As some of us solo queue people just know, Jax is annoying as all heck, I will say. Yep. And is he going to go down? Wow, no, he's nope. going to escape with his just life. Lucky man. gets away there. Malphite man. Malphite to pick up that kill. Man. Yeah, he should change his name to Malphite man because he is very good with his Malphite. <laughs> <laughs> it's like those people you see with the champion names in their gamer tag. Hey, I hey. will I will make an account named Malphite Man. You'll make an account named um, Malphite my, Man. I'm gonna change my Smurfs account. <laughs> How about you name it to Heimerdinger Man or something else? Yeah. <laughs> Just switch my name to Malphite Man. <laughs> embrace at I, some point embracing the meme is the best choice. Embracing it, you know. Yeah. My my um, Smurf account name is. I know I have a Smurf account, but I also am trying to like figure out. You know, once I get that up to playing at a ranked level, I mm -hmm. want to see exactly where I would be placed at. To be honest. Yeah. So I um, I called it Mini Oakley. Oh really? Yeah. I got Mini Oakley and X Linky. So. Nice. Okay, Yuki dashing in. Oh, oh a really good alt from the Zoe just to dodge out on that knockup. I think he would have been dead there if that she, connected. She would have been destroyed. Now, that, uh, now the... I think ri they misclicked the Rift Herald. I was sure. going to say, that doesn't look very right. Oh, and here comes Jarvan. Oh, wow, jeez. <laughs> yeah, All right. they're, this Rift Herald, they're not going to get too much from this. Yeah, take advantage of the mistakes, I guess. That's the name of this game. Now we're going to see four, peop four people from IUPI in the mid lane. And uh, another tornado knockup happening from Yuki. And he's going to use his win wall. I, I, yeah, that's, uh, that's an ability you got to really utilize this game. And 
Under Value is doing a good job here. And a knockup happening from the from Yuki. And now here comes all the ultimates. It's a team fight. There is a shutdown. On to the Zoe. No one has died yet. And here comes Under Value. He uses TP. There's a shutdown. On to the Rex side now. And here comes Frodo Baggins, and he goes down. Another shutdown. Lawrence down. picks up a kill. And, Lord, and yeah, Lawrence picks up another kill. Undervalue picks up two kills now. And now they are looking to get this first tower. What a fantastic team fight. A four versus one trade there. And that's a huge win for the Hard Rockers. That is exactly what they needed there. Picked up four kills, picked up a tower, and now clo trying to close that gold. Yeah, just trying to close that gold lead, and now we have the Ocean Drake who is going to come back up. And they are going to take this fairly quickly. They're not going to, uh, the uh, Jaguars are not going to have a chance to grab this. So a nice team fight there from the Hard Rockers. The TP coming on in from Undervalue just to get in there and get those knockups. Yep. Did a lot of damage there. So, Nasty Nato's clearing some wards out here. And, you know, kills starting to even out, but there is a still a little bit of discrepancy in the gold lead. I have to see Hard Rocker Esports really just need one more solid team fight. You have one more solid team fight and maybe one tower here, and then they could be in very good position to take this game, but again... This is Collegiate League of Legends. Anything is possible. I mean, we don't have a stat spot to tell us who was going to win. You know, if the stat, yeah. if, if a stat spot in Collegiate League of Legends, you know, took our stats versus their stats, they would. Uh, the stat spot might be in our favor. Yep. But that's not the case. It went a nice 2,000 IQ dodge there from Boyd. That yeah. was perfect. Yeah, he would have been done for, yeah, I think, because the Rek'Sai was right there. Yeah. Uh, so he's like, him. nope, give me the heck out of here. I'm out. It's okay, it's not AP Jarvan support, so I will take that. So this mid lane tier one is probably gonna go down here very soon for the hard rockers. But that just puts them still in pretty decent position. Last game they were losing all their towers. They could not get any pushes going. This game, much different story. Which means the hard rockers are very good at adapting in a three game series. So, yep. oh, and a tornado misses, but now the Sleepy Trouble Bubble goes out. And now Void is trying to get something going on to this Ooh. Jax. He gets stunned up, but he's under tower. So, this actually might go down, and Void actually goes down himself. But Lawrence is here to help. He is going to probably take out this Jax up top lane. We're not going to. Actually, our attention no, is pulled us was able to ward hop away, so... He ward hopped, but that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> Caitlyn has damage. Oh, and a nice sleepy trouble bubble. And a nice knockup. The stopwatch coming on out, and Zoe goes down again. So, Oh, and then here comes Great They Gizma. just don't really have enough damage to deal with this, it looks like. They do not, so Flash is coming on out. Luckily, there's no Zoe nearby. So a two-for-one trade there. Zoe... You know, the Zoe worked for them last game. It's not working too well now. She's, uh, Zodic is now 3-3 three and three this game. Oh, and a nice another tornado. This Jax is very low. And Caitlyn does have Ace in the hole, and she's going to use it. Oh, oh, and snipes him. Lawrence picking up his second kill. Second kill on the day on this in this game, so good job by him. Oh, and that almost was a steal there. Almost the steal. Void able to hang on to that one, though. And now we're going to see Infinity Edge be built. And that was Static Shiv that we were seeing being built. Wyatt, and now the IE, yep. which is back to its original uh, statistics of 80, 80 attack damage and 25% crit. So that's actually kind of convenient. Yeah. I miss those days. So now that's when I was in ADC main. Yeah. So yeah, now things starting to calm down here. We'll have to see where these next fights are going to be. It looks like next dragon is up in just a little over a minute. It's going to be a cloud or a win. 
and we really just need to see the vision start to come out for Hard Rocker Esports. I mean, yeah. they they have a reasonably nice pick comp with the Malphite Yasuo. If they could just roam with those two and you know secure some vision, maybe find a pick onto Zoe or the the Janna or the Ezreal. Well, these might be able to find some success through those avenues. IUPUI is very good at just de-warding. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we just saw J Riggs taking out a control ward. This is what the red side vision looks like, and it's gone less. Pretty much limited to their jungle. Now the blue is, you know, they don't have nearly as much vision either. They just they have a scuttle and maybe two other wards out. So and now they are looking at this top side, so it wouldn't surprise me if we see some rotations here. They do have Undervalue, who has his ultimate ready to go. And here comes the Braum. The Braum gets knocked up by the Janna Tornado. The Hard Rockers might be looking to fight here. They might be. They do have the damage, even though they not they don't have Yuki. This Yuki is actually going to keep this Jax just kind of just pushing. So it's kind of a standstill right now in the top lane. Oh, and a nice chunk of damage onto the J-Rigs. The Caitlyn Crit coming on out. And now that top tower is going to go down. All right, so now they're clearing out some vision, trying to, uh, you know, maybe even look for uh, a Baron in the next few minutes. So <laughs> Don't tell him my strat. Yeah. <laughs> Blue buff going to be grabbed over by Zadik. Whew. Excuse me. I just had a big old yawn. And so blue team, the IUPUI Jaguars are going to pick up the Ocean Drake. So now they're trying the D ward here. Looking around. The CS is actually in the favor of the Hard Rockers. They do have more CS. Yeah, and that's just why a this little goal. discrepancy in the top lane, but yeah. uh, that that's to expected. be expected. I mean, yeah. Jax is just like, Jax is Jax. Jax is, yeah, he can just, he can <laughs> farm way better than a Malphite can. But that's why this gold is so much closer now. Yeah. Oh, whoops. I'm just ruining things over here. You're ruining everything on the stream. There we go. Yep, now, now, hold on. Now we gotta get it all. Alright, there we go. <sighs> Had to speed it up a little bit. <laughs> Sorry, guys. One button, I just ruin everything. Ah, uh, that's why. That's why I'm here, Wyatt. Right. I, I, I always I always, feel like I can just go and type in Twitch chat, but then I realize moving the mouse just like, yeah. Oh, well. But yeah, hello those in Twitch chat that are tuned in to this Hard Rocker, vs. Hard Rocker Esports League of Legends match. Happy to have you on board. 13-11 kill score here. Just a 4,000 gold lead in the, in the advantage of the... IUPUI Jaguars and a nice chunk of damage there from the Zoe. And Jack still can't do anything to undervalue. He's just like, he's just running into a brick wall, literally. Yep. So exciting moments to come here soon. Hopefully. I don't like boring games, do you? Yeah. I well, mean, this has been a pretty high action game. It's just like. It seems so reactionary. I feel like that's the thing. Right now, we're seeing IUPUI being pretty re uh, proactive here, trying to pick up the Baron. But mm -hmm. and now the sleepy it'd be trouble great bubble. To see some more proactive plays coming oh on out. And here comes the, the teleport from. Side just does so much damage. And here comes the teleport. Stopwatch comes on out from J Riggs, and now he's going to go down. Lawrence is on a killing spree, and they were able to stop the Baron. They get one. They get a one for one there, which is actually worth. Anything to get them back into this game. Trying to close this out. A Janna, another Janna tornado. And Greg Nigma, he's been, he, you know, he's been taking the brunt of that. And now this tier two mid lane is going to go down, which is actually now going to give him a nice little advantage in this yeah. uh, in this mid lane. Another sleep with trouble bubble coming on to undervalue. It's gonna, he's gonna get a Q, and now here comes the ultimate, and there is the Yasuo knockups. Oh, a good stopwatch by the Zoe. But Greg Nigma has slain Zarek, 
And now it's going to be chaotic now. And here comes Ace in the hole, and that doesn't do enough damage. It just doesn't find the kill there, but... A nice another one-for-one one there. So these one-for-one one trades are actually going to work out. count up. I mean, we got the tower as well, so... That was actually it worth it for the Hard Rockers, who have now brought this game within 3,000 gold and only two kills short of um, the Jaguars. So no one's gotten the Baron. They were able to stop the Baron push there, so... Now here we go. Now we've seen the start to see this tanky comp just be absolutely something you don't want to mess with too. Yep. They are going to try and push. I see the Hard Rockers wanting to get this past 30 minutes because that means the Kaelin can pop off. The Yasuo is just going to be dangerous. And then Jarvan is also going to be something you don't want to mess with. So yeah, we need to start seeing some uh, more calculated engages out of this Jarvan. Yep. Most you definitely. Know. This uh, Rek'Sai doesn't nearly have... He's going an 80 Jarvan build. Uh, excuse me. Uh, Rek'Sai build. So, a lot of damage. Seen here. The Triforce finally built onto the Jax. And now, IUPUI, once again, looking at Baron. They're trying to... Cont they're just really trying to... They really want Baron. Yep. They were They were pissed off. I will say, about not getting it the first time. So now we're seeing the rotations up. And Jarvin now just doing a lot of farming. He's trying to keep up here. He does have six assists, even though he has died six times. But that means he's been engaged with the fights. At least he is trying to do something to help his team out, which is how you should be probably more likely playing him and letting this Yaswell do the work. And now the Drake is up, and that's going to be another Cloud Drake, which is something the Hard Rockers would not mind having. That would actually help the Aswa a whole lot. But at the same time, the Baron is going down. Yeah, they're starting it up. They see a lot of Hard Rockers on the bottom side of the map, and they pulled the trigger to try to get this Baron. And now they're rotating out because they know the Hard Rockers are coming, and they don't want to lose any members again to that. So. Yeah. They do not want to risk that. Sant undervalued on that Malphite. Going to pressure this bot lane. Try to match this Jax as best as possible. This tower looking pretty weak. You might be able to pick this up here with this minion wave. They could, and the Jax still. He just runs into that back wall, into that brick wall. And he just can't do anything. Oh. It's actually, I love it when this happens because I'm, I hate Jax. I absolutely hate Jax unless I'm playing Jax. Yeah. So anytime a Jax can just hit a nice big old brick wall, the better for him. And another, yeah, he's just taking yeah, more damage yeah, than he needs to. Yeah, slowly but surely, undervalued, poking away at that Jax. Going to make that 1v1 a little bit more manageable if it does happen. Now, Wind Dragon on the map. And Hard Rocker Esports has some great control around that objective, so we'll have to see if they push forward and try to pick that one up. Vision also looking a lot better from the Hard Rockers this game. They have yeah, they learned their sound, lesson. Yeah, they soundly have uh, Vision around the bottom side of the map. Now trying plus, to push that around the uh, top side. Jarvan took um, Zombie Ward, which is actually very nice to have. You know, when you kill a ward, you get a zombie ward. Yeah. So. One sec. You better not be screwing anything up. <laughs> my my it, mom's in chat. Your mom's in. Wait, she has a username too? Yeah, I guess. Oh so. my lord. We are making progress, ladies and we're, gentlemen. We're busting into the older generation. Yeah, the, the people who say esports should not be a thing or the people who say gaming is not healthy. So, hello, Mrs. Ingle. How are you doing today? I'm, by the way, I'm Adam. I don't know if you, um, why it's talked about me or not. Um, <laughs> <laughs> probably I not. I'm, sadly, I don't like visit home that much. So. Yeah, but don't you call your mom at all? Sometimes. This Sorry, Mom. I'll call you today. <laughs> I'll call you today. <laughs> You're getting called out now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyway, back to League of Legends here, okay? We're, we're having a good time today. We oh, to undervalued having to alt away there. What's this alt cooldown? I think it's, I'm 
I'm not too sure. 100. 64 seconds. Okay. okay, that's not bad. I know at level or at level six, it's 100 seconds, and it yeah. goes downward. So that's actually nice. So now the Hard Rockers trying to get in this mid lane here, trying to protect it. Yep, trying to prevent the siege, and the Caitlyn is a huge help with that. With that. Hitting away those. Okay, so now, oh no, dude, this is the second blue buff steal. Oh my god. And the Zoe's just so on point with those. Well, actually she didn't, that was an invade. They were able to get that blue buff because there was three of them there. Yeah. It's not really stealing if there's three people there. Okay, so now Hard Rocker's moving on up towards this Baron. Going to see what they can do here. Yeah. Okay, so now clearing out wards around the Baron Pits. Yeah, we, we here, here, let me just yeah. do that. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I know, it's so distracting. This three minute spectator delay, we can. It's the it's, worst. It's the worst, because we just want to look over and just watch what the team is doing. But that's what we get for being coaches. But, yeah. man, undervalued, just doing so much damage here. Just want to watch the match. It's just All like right, it's so hard. All right, I'm gonna try we to, need like, to get lock like a part. Is, we need a partition. We should. <laughs> and that would help because it, it, you know, something that isn't that. <laughs> I just want to know what's happening real time. Uh, right, please fix this. Yeah, we don't want three minutes spectator delay. We need live matches. That would make so many issues <laughs> for like warding and uh, yeah. vision control. Yeah. <laughs> No, but yeah, it's great to see some parents in the chat. Yeah, thank you guys so much. Yeah, that's awesome. Support your kids. Support your children's hobbies. Yeah, that's all it is. And now Greg Nigma has slain on the Zark. And now here comes the teleport coming from the Jax. And now Jax is here. Better watch out, but Brom is here as well. Boy, trying to get around. The, the Rek'Sai does have Guardian Angel, which if he dies, he's going to come on back. Ooh, Ezreal ult is flying through. It's going to land on all of the Hard Rockers, but actually Braum Shield is going to absorb most of that. Yeah, it doesn't really do much damage there. Good job. And now they're going to try and start this Baron. Yeah, onto the Baron, see what they can't make happen. Oh, but Void's taking so much damage. Braum Shield now there, but Jax is in the oh. back line. They're going to have to try to pop his Guardian Angel. Yeah, and Jax just takes a lot of damage there. And Jax is going to go down, and he is going to go down again. Oh, and he, but before he dies, he's going to pick up Yuki, and he's going to say good night. And now the rest of the Hard Rocker team is trying just to get out of there. Oh, and Void goes down again. Just before he could get his EQ off. The that, Ezreal does quite a bit of damage with those Qs. Yeah, those Qs. I mean, Ezreal is very much in this meta like still. But yeah. But now this comp has actually have come alive. Yeah. 36 minutes in the game. They are, you know, they got the Braum and the Malphite who can just be like, hello. It's a brick wall there, you know? And then the amount of knockups for this team. They have really built this comp around this Yasuo, who is actually by far doing a lot of damage. He has Bloodthirster now, i.e. Phantom Dancer. And now Stopwatch. Yeah, it's crazy. Now, and now the I Baron is going I down. From Starting up this Baron, but this is kind of dangerous. All of Hard Rockers now on their way. They're going to be trying to zone them off. Yeah, that's all they got to do. And here comes the ace in the hole from the from Lawrence. Doesn't do enough. Rek'Sai also has GA as well. So another CP Trouble Bubble coming out. It hits one of the tanks, one of the front lines, and now they're going to back. And they're going to they're going to have to you know they're just going to go. You know what? We got it. Nope. Actually, they're saving. Ooh, and now Hard Rockers starting up the Baron. And, and here it And comes. they're able to grab it. The like, Baron goes down to the Hard Rockers. Greg Nigma trying just to do anything he can to be that tank. Yuki uses his stopwatch, he, and he is going to go down to J-Riggs. But here we go. Moodle doing the best he can against two tanks. And Void 
goes ahead and he goes down. And now Malphite the underval uh, with undervalue. He's going to just do a lot of damage here. It's a three for three. These are just trade kills. Lawrence the undervalue are the only two people left on the hard rockers. But they can actually out damage this comp here. And undervalue is trying to do whatever he can to save Lawrence, and Lawrence uses his stopwatch, and Moodles goes down, that's the ace, it's 20 to 20 kills, it's now, the gold is now completely even. The Hard Rockers are absolutely doing a great job here. Yeah. They were down, and now they are back in this game, Wyatt. Yeah, and they've almost even 300 gold down, that's so minuscule, it doesn't even matter, they're on to the Elder Dragon. And that's just gonna boost them up. You know, an ocean and mountain drake with Elder, that is way better than two cloud drakes. Okay, so now Hard Rockers, Elder, empowered. They have what it takes to take down IUPY and, and push this to they, three. They still have the Baron. They still have the yeah, Baron. Yeah, so they got both. And, and they got the Guardian Angels as well. Yeah. Lawrence with his Guardian Angel uh -oh. only has died once this game. Uh-oh. <laughs> Lawrence with Guardian Angel. We've seen this before, yeah. and it doesn't end pretty for the other team. No. It never ends pretty. When Lawrence gets a GA, it's over. You know, he's going to just start outputting so much damage. He has Rapid Fire Cannon he, and Static Shift, which do a lot of damage on their own. Yeah. Now having the Guardian Angel and the IE with 25% crit... Um, Let's take a look here at Lawrence, actually. Um, I'm just going to look at his stats here. He now has... Oh, well, it doesn't show his crit. How dare they? That's oh, weird. Yeah. They don't show crit. Wait. Yeah, it's 68. I think it's that. Yeah, scroll up one. That blue thing. Oh, oh that's, that's ability, ability power. power. Oh, what the heck? Right? Fix that. We want to uh, know crit yeah. now. What's the crit, Riot? Anyway, 20 kills to 20 kills. Hard Rocker Esports taking command now. And this game has taken a turn for the best. His Q does over 800 damage. Wow. Just one Q does 800. Dang. Yeah. That is a lot. Ace in the hole is going to do right over 1,000 damage. And now here comes the, um, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I was trying to say there. No, it's I could just right. look over it. I was like, oh. It's so, it's so hard. All right, let's tell them. We're, so we have the players to our left, and we can, like, watch the game in yeah, real time. We, we see undervalue screen, and we're just like, I just want to cast with that. <laughs> yeah, we can literally just see what's happening. So. But now Void is getting, got, getting caught out here, but his GA is going to pop. There's three GAs yeah, on the side of Hyrule. but his team is going to be there to, to have oh, his back no. in a four-person cataclysm. And a nice ultimate coming from the Void. And he is going, they're just going to clean up. They're saying, you know what, IUPUI, you might have beat us last game, but we learned. We learned your strategy, and we're going to punish now. 40 minutes now, 22-21, 71.6 thousand gold, no, 72.2 thousand gold compared to 68. They have retaken the lead, and now the Hard Rockers are looking to end this game. Yep, oh, Jax going into the back line, trying to find his way onto Lawrence, but undervalued oh. with the unstoppable force, will buy some time. Lawrence now just shelling out so much damage. Just so much damage for this Hard Rocker team. It is absolutely insane. He is worth a thousand gold bounty. And it looks like the hard rockers are going to grab their first inhibitor of this best of three. And now the super inhibs are... <laughs> what is happening? What is happening up there? Oh my god. What is happening Where's in he... this facility? Coach Matthews is just like, get me... like I, he, he can't hold his excitement. Yeah. He just wants to get... <laughs> <laughs> Things are going quite well in the facility, but... We, we don't know what's time. happening. All we don't know time. what's happening. We can't predict yeah, no the spoilers. future. Yeah, we can't predict three minutes into the future. All right, so hard rockers now. All right, no, no spoilers. 
Hard Rocker Esports grouping in the mid lane, going to start pushing forward. Now, Elder Enhanced, Baron going to be up in 30 seconds. Okay, they have the, they have what it takes to burn this. Elder will have to see if Hard Rockers are going to turn onto it. Clearing some vision now. They see. They don't see Jax's bot yet. I wonder if that's what it will take for them to pull the trigger here. Sleepy Trouble Bubble landing onto Void. Braum going to be there with the shield to soak up any damage that comes through. Now they started off the Baron. Now the Hard Rockers are absolutely shredding this. IUPUI with Jax in the bot lane. They are not going to have what it takes, but Undervalue pulls the trigger onto this Zoe. Sleepy Trouble Bubble coming through. Ace in the hole, Ooh. not enough damage. Just, but it's so much damage, though. It's over a thousand. True damage. Oh, oh. and it just wasn't enough damage. In it, nope. it did find its way to Zoe before that yeah. heal came through. That, that redemption is such a powerful item now in this in this game. You know, you saw redemption maybe every so often. Now you're seeing it almost every single game, especially solo queue. Yeah. So redemption is a lifesaver. And an earth, because you can just spam it. Yeah, but earth start. is a different story. Just honestly. clicking on a redemption. Dude, that would be broken. Yeah. Just, just like this a minute. That would just be. All, all activatables are super <laughs> broken in earth. Like twin shadows. You can just, like, slow them. <laughs> it's so much oh, fun. Man. And now the Elder Drake is back up. This is the second Elder Drake, and the Hard Rockers are here. The G, the the GA st uh, st are still up for Void and for Caitlyn. All right, so Hard Rockers on to the Elder. I think IUPUI has no chance but to go for a steal here, and they do not find it. Guardian Angel immediately popped from Grig, but Hard Rocker Esports are just closing the gap, and they're jumping onto the back line of IUPUI. Grig finally going to go down 3 for 0. Elder picked up, and now Hard Rockers are going to start parading down the mid lane. A 3 for 0 fight for the Hard Rockers on the Elder Trait. You know, this Hard Rocker team, these guys are looking real good. They might, they're going to take this to three games, just like last week against Washington University St. Louis. They are on the inhibitor. They are heading to the Nexus Towers. Yep. Gray and Nigma going to be tanking those up. Make sure there's no delay. And now Hard Rocker Esports onto the Nexus. Going to bring this to game three. Mm, baby, yes, that's what I'm talking about. There we go. That is how you close out a game for this Hard Rocker team. So many two barons, two elders, and they were able to find a way to make it to game three. Game three. They Wow, what a fantastic game. Congratulations to the Hard Rockers. That's two weeks in a row now that they have been able to pull off game three. And that was a 45-minute game. Yeah, so let's jump to a break because yep. we need to uh, we need to rest with game three. Yeah. So we'll jump to a momentary break. We'll be back with the final game. Welcome to the world, no heroes and villains Welcome to the war, we've only begun So pick up your weapon and face it There's blood on the ground, go and take it You get one shot to make it out alive So higher and higher you chase it It's deep in your bones, go and take it This is your moment now is your time, so prove yourself and rise, rise, make them remember. 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is game three, which means the Silver Scrapes is on. And wow, what a game. Yeah, that what a way to bring it back. Yeah. We yeah. just refuse to be swept in a series. 
Oh, uh, one second here. Let's turn this music down a bit. I think I went a little <laughs> overboard with my <laughs> rise. <laughs> when that song first came out, I literally grinded solo queue and listened on repeat. I, yeah, dude, uh, I, I every just, time. I probably listened to Rise yeah. like a hundred times. When I got into um, Draft, I would turn that song on. I just wanted to it's get my so, blood. It gets you pumped. Yeah, yeah. gets you pumped. Um, you know what else is a really good song? Is the uh, KDA pop star oh, song. Yeah, okay. All right. Good job, Ryan. <laughs> I am so glad you came up with that. That was such a great song. That's um, the best, like, business move they've made like all of 2018 yeah, 2018 that was the that best. was the <laughs> only thing that was like the best thing that came out of 2018 for them was the kda the kda <laughs> seriously but once again welcome on back this is absolutely fantastic this is two weeks in a row we have gone to the best to the three games yep and these guys you know last week the Hard Rockers, they they were they got pumped for about five minutes after their win yep. in game two. And then they're like, all right, game time. Then they're like, all right, get back to the series. This time, they are way more pumped. They know they can win this third game. So, yep. ladies and gentlemen, once again, make sure you cheer on your Hard Rockers. Spam it in chat. Let us know you're supporting the SD Mind Hard Rockers as we get ready for game three. Yep. So, any final thoughts? Before we hit, I mean, they just gotta, they know they can win it and they just gotta go out there and show confidence. Now, just uh, clean up the mistakes that happened in the early game. And just the so miscalculations. E just so everyone knows, this is our first year varsity program here at School of Mines. Uh, this is the first year they are actually competing in Sea Law. And they're ranked 24th right now. They are in prime position to get playoffs if they win this game. There's three more weeks after this. Of Collegiate League of Legends, three, and then we head in the playoffs. That's why kind of Rushmore Open League is kind of up in the air if we're going to do it. If the Hard Rockers make the playoffs. Yeah, we'll have to put Ru push Rushmore Open League to the fall. Yeah, we're going to have to push it to Which, the fall. Which, uh, to be honest, it might get pushed to the fall anyway. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All <laughs> we'll right. See. And now we are getting into the draft, ladies and gentlemen. And once again. It's, uh, hold on. We'll switch it on over there. Here we are, each team, even a piece at one win. Lee Sin being taken off the board. How much you want to bet, Trinomir or Bayern? Yeah. Okay, we'll I'm see. putting five bucks on it, all right? Anybody hey, else hey, want to I take that them. bet? <laughs> I think they'll ban the Malphite. Malphite, yeah, Malphite, yeah, as well. Nope, they banned oh. the Trinomir. <laughs> Man, their scouting report a little bit off, if well, I may say so they, myself. I think they just went off last week's stats and didn't yeah. realize... We need to tell Brett that because I feel like he'll get a, a kick out of it. Yeah. And by the way, like, um, if you watched last week's matchup, you're my XP. Um, he's actually a football player. Yeah. So a he's wide a dual receiver? sport. Yeah. Or um, I forget what position yeah. he plays. Yeah, though. but he's a dual sport athlete now. Yeah. Trinomir, Lissandra, and now the Kane. He's like Deion Sanders. <laughs> right? Multi-sport athlete. Yeah, there we go. Good for him. So, Brett, if you're watching at home, we miss you. We wish you were here with us, watching this game with us. So, we you're here in spirit, though. Yeah, like I could feel you here. A little we should bit. get him on the cast someday. Yeah, we should. All right. So, anyway, back to the pick and ban. Morgana next. So, standard bans uh, for the Hard Rockers. Standard kind of that. Uh, so, the Aspo is going to be taken off. So, so now first pick, we'll have to see what it is. Do they want to maybe grab that Caitlyn? I say so. I say it worked. Up. Yeah, it worked. You know, it's they picked the Caitlyn last time pretty hard, pretty easily in the first rotation, and it worked. So, yeah, Caitlyn. Caitlyn yeah, might up. as well. So it worked. I mean, they didn't really pick anything that could out damage it, but is there really an ADC right now that can out damage a Caitlyn? Um, I think it comes more down to just like lane dominance. Is there an ADC more lane dominant than Caitlyn? Now we're gonna see the Shen. Maybe come on Lucian. Out. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe Lucian. Yeah, it just depends. But now Shen is gonna make its way back into this comp. Oh, and the Master Yi hover. Oh, and they're gonna go ahead and pick up that Sivir. That didn't go well last time. Caitlyn versus Sivir. Yeah. And that's when. U, um, IUPUI had it. I'm curious if we can maybe see their support on something different. Yeah. Maybe the Lulu? 
you know? I think the Lulu actually makes a lot of sense for them with the Sivir. Right? Well, you're they'll just... have to pick at this rotation. Yeah. So here comes Ergot's going to be picked up next. Undervalue has done a great job on Yeah, I, th Ergot. I felt the Ergot looked quite well. Um, the first game, it just got behind with, uh, mm -hmm. you know, got ganked. So, so now, what is going to be this next pick? Are they going to pick up the support here, maybe? That could be. I feel like they should pick up the support. Oh, and here comes the Karthus pick. Finally, Void is going to get his pick. <laughs> All right. <laughs> what are you doing? We'll, uh, we'll do that. Hold on, we'll, hold on. We'll wait. Oh, okay. Yeah, good point. Good point, Adam. That's Always what I'm here for. It's just to take care of you, man. <laughs> and now the next pick coming on in. They are... The Janna is looking like it's being hovered, and that is what's going to be locked in here. So three games with Janna, it's one for one today. Yep. Hey, are, are you having problems? Um, no, not at all. Okay, good. There we go. And now here comes the next man. What, what are you doing? There we go. <laughs> you're like, you're tilting me with <laughs> 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 I swear. Just clicking and ruining things left and right. And now the Brahm's going to be taken away from Greg Nigma, who is just excellent with the Brahm. But now we're now the Zoe officially off the table. We are going to see two new mid lanes this time around. So, Yep. I like it. I like it a lot. Because they kind of... Yeah. Now we're going to now we're going to I'm see interested something. to see these final bands. I was going to say Lissandra's taken off the table which we know that they like to play. They're going to probably put Z um Zodic in the mid lane this time. Mhm. Mm Set a lane swap. And I wonder if they'll rely back to the uh... Oh yeah, Zodic is back Rek'Sai. mid. He used to be top. They are going to put him back mid. Mhm. Mm so, and now the Rex I going to be taken off the table. And now J Riggs has to play something new. So here we go. Second rotation of picks. Second rotation coming through. Jack's going to be hovered. Are, are they sure? Do they really want to go with that? It didn't look that great the first game. I don't think uh, Frodo But baguettes. they already have a top laner. Oh, and the Rengar. Okay. We Rexai see no longer on the board. Rengar picked up. All right, so now Hard Rocker Esports still need to pick a support, still need to pick a mid laner. I think they're leaving the mid to last, which is okay. Yeah, so. but they're, they are going to get counter picked. Hard to avoid. Thresh, Thresh. I like that. Yep. Good champion. Thresh, Caitlyn, bot lane. And, and uh, is Avery good. already has a warm up game on it. So, you know, the Janna Sivir lane, eh, I don't know how well that's going to work doesn't really synergize together well. Yeah, it really doesn't. It's really hard to kill, though. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to tell you that much. It's really hard Here. to kill, but it's hard to pressure. Now the Aurelia being hovered. Yeah, because the, I feel like the Janna doesn't... Yeah, because yeah. Sivir, it's like you want a wave clear. And the Aurelia being picked up for Yuki, who, by the way, is a god with you, uh, Aurelia. Yeah. I think this is actually good copy. Oh, and they oh, pick no. a Silas. What is this? Oh my lord. What is this? We are we're we're in it for a show, ladies and gentlemen. Be prepared to see the, some fireworks. There is going to be some shenanigans this game. I with agree. the Silas that can steal champion ultimates. But which one? I think he's going to be primarily targeting Karthus. Karthus. <laughs> You're going to want to steal, especially late game. <laughs> late. And oh. then, depending on, Car I mean, depending on how ahead Silas is, it could potentially do more damage than if Karthus were to cast the ultimate. Yep. <clears throat> but it's okay, because guess what? I believe there's a lot of appeal for this Karthus. There's a lot of push. There's going to be yeah. a lot of ways Our, where the Karthus team fight is looks really yeah. good. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think the Silas will have a, hardly a chance to get on the Karthus. I think he's going to have to go for someone like Aurelia or Urgot, because that's who he's going to be faced with. I mm -hmm. mean, straight up. So now the spectator delay once again.
There it is. There it is. Let's I, go. I need some water. You honestly. need some water? What if we take this time and just take a couple minutes to yeah, ourselves? Yeah, let's we just think, take a two-minute break. Yeah, we're going to be right back because some of it, we've been di- like it just feels like one thing after another today. So we're going to take a couple-minute break, and we'll be right back. Yep. And welcome on back. We are five seconds away from those beautiful loading screens here for League of Legends. We just yep. had to take a breather. That's all we needed. Yeah, I needed some water. I'm it's on. like, you know, when it, when you when you get into intense situations, mental focus is always yep. the best. Um, both, you know, White's the head coordinator here at the esports uh, facility, well, of the esports program. Or, program. And then, director, you might say. Yeah, director of esports. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's actually what his title is. I w- I don't. I should have campaigned for that because when I when I first signed on, they just said, "All right, esports coordinator," and I was like, "All right, whatever." You know, I just want the job. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to be picky about my title. But um, and then we have Coach Matthews, who is our drafting coach. And then what? What? What is my position in all of this? I we've never really determined that. Um, assistant coach. Assistant coach. Okay, yeah. that works. I won't complain. So, you get all the coaches here. Yeah. So, which is and we have a new introducing a new coach on Monday. Yeah. So that should be interesting. And we'll have him hopefully on stream next week just to kind of introduce himself introduce to, him to the community. So here we go, game three of this best of three. The silver scrapes is played. It's now time. All of this, all the marbles. Whoever loses this is out of playoff contention. So, a lot on the line. IUPUI has not been out there. Ooh, and a nice little jump there from J Riggs. Wow, and Ooh. aggressive. Literally no hesitation. Coming down, on coming that down one. there, Rengar. Oof. It's okay, no one wants to kill you yet. <laughs> I don't even want to kill you. I really like the scaling of our team composition, though. It's very scaly. It has a lot of peel. I mean, almost our whole comp is focused on scaling to the thirty-minute yeah. mark. As long as Thresh doesn't hook onto the Silas, mm-hmm. I think we'll be fine. Yeah, the Silas is the big question mark, and I think that's why the mid lane matchup is the matchup to watch this game. And which um, on our 
other monitor that we have that we're using today. I'll make sure we keep an eye on that, so. Yeah. Unless we need to somehow sit down. All right, so Zadok getting an early push in the mid lane, but Yuki is there. All right, so game three, we're settling in. Yuki doing his best to collect these minions under tower. It looks like he will have no issues picking up all six of those. And here we are, game three. Honestly, I was I was getting a little bit nervous that first game because we went up five kills to one, and then all of a sudden it was five kills to five kills, and I was like, okay, oh, we need no. to we yeah. need to start readjusting our strategy here. Yeah, just they were just a little too aggressive, and the early ignite coming on out from the from nasty Nados, that's a little awkward. Forces the flash. Yeah, it forces the flash, but it's just a little awkward. <laughs> Yeah, I think maybe wait for more damage to come through because yeah. now... Now you've wasted it. Yeah, and your lane doesn't have a whole lot of kill pressure anyway. So, even less kill pressure now. And this is not what you want. Nope. Oh, and a double flash there. So they both tried to flash for that push over there. Go for that outplay. Oh, and maybe Yuki can do some here, oh, but doesn't he doesn't get the flash. Oh, no! Riggs. J Riggs is going to escape with his life, but here is undervalued. Now he's in a 3v1 situation, which he does need to be careful with. And what? What in the world is happening? This is exactly not what you wanted in this. This is oh. not going not the down best start. Three kills to zero at three minutes. And now Silas has two kills already. Yeah, and a 450 gold bounty on his head. Yeah, not, the, not, not the cleanest start. Let's. Uh, yeah, let's forget that happened. Yeah. All, All right. right. Let's know, just negate it. It's, okay. Let's pretend like it's zero, zero kills. Zero, zero kills. You know, you know, don't pay attention to gold. All right. All right. <laughs> All right. Moving on. So in the bottom, um, good, yep. good Q coming up from Lawrence there. Lands onto Nasty Nados. That was every coach's answer right there. We're just going to pretend that didn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is a decent, like... Uh, mentality to have, you know, look at the game as if it is 0-0, zero, zero, right? Yeah. You know, reset your mental. Oh, and a nice taunt there. I think that's his first taunt that he's landed all day. But the toss-up happening from undervalue. So once again, we're seeing an Urgot Shen matchup, which I, I actually quite enjoy watching. Yeah. I think it's a good matchup. Oh, and a nice death oh. sense happening from Craig Nigma. And In maybe a little bit of an early ignite coming out. Yeah, Lawrence, that's awkward. Lawrence, Lawrence wasn't quite able to land too many headshots there. No, but he Ide got the Ideally, flash. you get the trap. Trap, headshot, net, headshot, Q. And, yeah. But wasn't able to really pull off that combination that time around. No, nope, he wasn't able to. But he got the... Um, Greg Nigma was able to get the flash from the Janna and the heal. Oh, and now a gank. And they don't see J Riggs quite yet. Oh, no. This and could be disastrous. Oh, but the nice essence. He's going to go down. a massive outplay. A massive outplay by Grey Ooh. Enigma. Lawrence is back in it, ladies and gentlemen. Lawrence, absolutely fantastic. And he was able to. Oh, and undervalue stops a bat there. Good. This is what you expect to see from a team who's trying to make playoffs. Is somebody who's trying to just make plays. And when Silas just does so much damage to Yuki right now. Yeah, the Silas is quite scary at this point. So... Yuki sitting at about 50% health here. Going to probably have a little bit of trouble getting all this CS as a push. Yeah, but he's oh, ahead. Oh, he has a cannon in still. Still yeah. chilling there. And now here comes Void. He's trying to do something. Trying to block off some of this pathing from Zar uh, Z Zarek. Zodic, excuse me. Zodic. Frodo Baguettes. Trying to out farm. And he is. He's doing a great job of it. And Silas is doing a lot here, but, you know, he's just not keeping up in the farm, which is going to probably bite him. Yeah, and, man, the Silas is just, like, um, it just outranges the the Aurelia. The Aurelia and 
we can kind of see how that's taking place early on in this matchup. We'll have to see how this plays out. Gray Enigma going to check the dragon there with his lantern. Ooh, and Yuki just not going to be able to get the recall off. And right now he does have 1100 gold, 11, 1150 gold, so he is going to be able to buy some here. So he is, you know, Silas does have a little bit of a damage advantage on him, but not yeah. as bad as we expected, so. Let's go ahead and toggle the gold leads here as well. Yeah. So we can see Silas about 600 gold up. That and first blood came the in. rest of the lanes relatively even. Shen does have a little bit of an advantage as well. But then we see our bot lane starting off with a good lead over IUPUI's bot lane there. Ooh, a good flip coming out. Taunt isn't going to CC undervalued that time around. And Lawrence now just doing a great job looking at mid lane on our other monitor here. Yep. Just so much damage, and there it is. Ooh, is that a going oh, in? And no. this might be an all in, actually. Yeah, he's going all in. He's going hard for this one. I'm surprised he didn't go for the ultimate steal there. I don't think he had enough mana to really make that and happen. We're, and we're seeing Karthus now. He is level six. Yep. So that so. power spike coming through, the global presence, and a good death sentence coming. And this is exactly what I was talking about. Oh, and another auto. Oh, but a really good Shen teleport. And now the ultimate, the teleport coming from Andre Valley. He goes down, and now Caitlyn is trying not is tr trying not to go down. Void is there, and he is going to survive. Yeah, and that was just... That was unlucky. That the, was the Janna unlucky. Uh, survived. She was able to heal herself and stay alive for that, so... Yep. Unfortunate though that um, the Shen ultimate was ca was channeled, but then Undervalued tried to come through with his own teleport, and that just uh, played out miserably as he fell shortly after his teleport was successfully channeled. But Void was able to get two stacks from that ultimate, so mm -hmm. um, two Dark Harvest stacks. And Dark Harvest, even though it got nerfed, it is still super powerful. Now um, we're seeing, you know. He has the Dark Seal already. And a good push into Frodo Baggots. He's going to have to tank. Look how many casters he's tanking. Oh, uh, and that's, a, that's exactly what you see, but Dragon goes down. That was a Mountain Drake. Yep, Mountain Dragon picked up, and it looks like Rengar just straight up soloed that. He can. I mean, he's... He can be pretty powerful. And here's another all-in, but a nice stun there from Yuki. And here we go. Oh. Yeah, the Silas is just... It's just too... It's so, so powerful. It's so hard to get a successful trade against. But things in the bot lane shaping out quite well, even though they did give up some early turret platings. You know, it's still a, just right over 2,000 gold advantage for IUPUI. And this is ki kind of the mid lane, kind of the matchup you want to see. Oh, and a nice another flip. And here comes Void. And he gets taunted. Oh, a really good taunt. But he gets another Dark Harvest stack. So. And that was flashable, but I don't know if it's worth flashing it's to grab that Shen kill. No, it's not worth right now. It would not be worth. He does have three assists. Just gonna kind of keep our eye here and see who Silas takes an ultimate from. And right now he hasn't taken anybody's. So. Nice. There's J Riggs coming in the middle here. He's going to yep. help him get some turret plates here. Get some yeah, extra gold in Alex his pocket. On that, Karthus does have to go to the mid lane and try to minimize the amount of plates. Ooh, and the alt stolen. 
the Karth Assault was stolen there. That's exactly what you didn't want to see. No. So oh, now Lordy. Silas will be able to cast that ability. I'm curious in which fashion he will choose to. I'm guessing he'll wait to try to get Yuki low and then see if he can't just pop him with the, the alt. Or maybe Caitlyn. Yeah. But so far, Hard Rocker Esports just trying to hang on. Things not necessarily going their way so far. It's a it's an early game though. This this yeah. is a team comp that just scales late. You know? And they have to hold on for that and hope they don't get. I mean, you can't be given. Minutes. Yeah, you can't be given up. Uh, too many towers if your hopes are to scale late. And that's, you know, like, whatever, anytime you have a card in the jungle, you just expect just to kind of not have a very strong early game because you're not going to get those ganks right away. Yeah. You know, really his best way of Karthus ganking is pressing R. Yeah. I mean, that's it. So using his ultimate. I think IUPUI is doing a great job with grabbing these towers this game, though. Mm -hmm. You can see they've gotten a s decent amount of turret planning on both mid and bot lane. And Ooh. here comes j -Riggs again, and now the ultimate comes out from Zodic using the Karthus ultimate. He was able to take down Greg Nigma. Yeah, that was a great use of that ultimate. Finds that channel, but now maybe Ooh, Yuki in a position he, to yeah. find the kill. Yeah, Yuki throws out his ignite. Yeah, and he's now gonna probably get this. He oh, does. No, oh, the shield, and he gets a turn out right back. Played. But oh, the there we shut go. down coming on down. Good alt coming through from Void picks up that kill. Well, we're gonna see this tier one bot tower go down. It wasn't, you know, get, just getting a kill is worth it right now for the hard rockers. Ooh, and this might be a, a, kill, kill. a kill potential here in the top lane, and it will be the Fear Beyond Death coming on out from Undervalued and say good night. You're going to get shredded up by Big Fat Scary Man. Yeah. <laughs> Although if you've seen the... Uh, did you watch that new cinematic that Riot Games put out? Um forget what it's called. Don't talk to me about cinematics right now. <laughs> Alright, anyway, but I, the Scion is, looks really cool in the cinematics. So I was gonna, that was my point there. Oh, oh, oh the yeah. Scion does. Yeah, the Scion. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. The last cinematic one. They did the champion teaser for Silas. Yeah. You know, I just saw that and was just like, you know, what's next? What's the next champion that they're going to come out with? Somebody who can steal my social security number? I mean, <sighs> they got three champions now that one steals abilities. abilities. The other, now we have one that steals alts, and we have one who just copies his teammates. I mean, what kind of ridiculous crap is this? Ooh, but this is a really good pickup by Hard Rockers. Infernal Dragon, which is bonus damage, will go on over, so that is a great pickup, especially at 14 minutes. Try to help them out. Ooh, Silas... Getting a lot of damage off. They're just... Ooh, and that is, is that the Shen teleport? It is. Shen TP coming through. They're not able to find a taunt on it, anyone. Taunt will there... Will be channeled to escape. He did pick up Karthus ult again. Yeah, so. I'm not... Not too surprised. That's. I'm guessing that was the main reason they picked the champion, right? Yeah. It's so. They're like, here, if you're gonna have a Karthus, we're gonna also have a Karthus. So. Exactly. And that's the whole reason Karthus is kind of relevant in this meta. It's just his ultimate. You know, globally hit everyone on the map. Globally hit everyone. He can actually wave clear very well. And here comes another death sense, and he might get a solo kill in Great Enigma. Great. Man, stick. I give him a he round of applause yeah. for that. Do not mess around under turret when Grand Enigma's on that thresh. Great play coming out. All right, so 
Lawrence. The, yeah, and the kill lead starting to close back. I mean, sure, um, IUPUI is up 5k gold, but... <laughs> we saw it know, last some time. Yeah, with some good things coming out for uh, Hard Rock Esports as well. Ho hopefully they can hang on here for... Uh, the long haul and there's some good you know com or some good sportsmanship there in the yeah, chat nice I just hook. saw that nice hook coming out from Shen all right so Zadik now in the bottom lane trying to make some work see if he can't take down this turret And I feel like once we see Irelia get that Triforce, we're going to see a pretty big power spike coming through. So I mean, that that's all you just need. You know, it's always... Irelia is not the best, like, early game. Yeah. You really yeah. just got to hang just, on. Yeah, you just got to hang on until you get level... Well, like, I mean, Irelia, is she, she's, she is pretty strong early game, to be yeah. fair. But yeah. I think they, they tried to nerf... Um, nerf her a little bit and make it so her auto attacks are more important, not necessarily her blade rushes. Yeah, can we just so. talk about that um, that tilting Baron uh, blue <laughs> blue buff play right there? Yeah. Um, IUPUI trying to steal that blue and it ends up resetting. Ooh, and now oh, Zonic Urgot. is going to get taken. Urgot advantage. alts the, the Caitlyn. But now, IUPUI is going all in with this team fight. Zodic going to fall. Now Yuki joining the party. And Let's here comes the Karthus ultimate, and it's going to hit a oh, lot of people. What a fantastic what a play. a great fight coming from Hard Rocker Esports, and they got, I think they got a, a, quite a few shutdowns there as well. They got a lot of shutdowns. It looks like they were able to shut down um, the Sivir, actually. Yeah, 500 gold there. I think so. Yep, 500 gold for the Sivir kill. 600 gold. Uh, earlier on when Void took down Zodic for the first time. So those things are looking really good for Hard Rocker Esports, but now what they need to do is start trying to get some of these towers. Yeah, Because that's, that's where the gold discrepancy lies. Three towers, two zero... They just, yeah, and it looks like Hard Rockers are doing quite well with the vision, you know, around their blue buff. They will be able to spot out, well, some of those wards are actually just expiring, as I mentioned. Yeah, I was like, yeah, they, they were able to look at, the, see, they saw the Rengar, so they, they know where he's at. Yep. Now, Drake's going to be up here in about five seconds, so... All right, I don't think they're going to be feeling too confident to start the dragon, though. No, because they don't the have any. Are right there. They don't have any vision, actually. Ooh, and that is very risky for Lawrence to go for that ward, but gets a couple autos off on it. All right, top lane, starting to chip away at that top lane tower. So, and the ultimate taken away from Void again. Yep. Ooh, and Yuki's not going to be able to dodge out on that, but I think he's going to survive oh, that. Oh, he survives the Karth Assault. How many stacks does this Karth have right now? Oh, and another ultimate from Undervalued who's just going to chop just him up. Just ramping up, and it looks like we... Yeah, a great kill there. Now taking the kill lead, but like I said, they we got to start figuring out how we're going to po poke down some of these towers. So right now, Void has six stacks on Dark Harvest, so something oh, you kind of want to see. And here comes the teleports. Just immediately erases, and this is not looking good for the Hard Rockers. They find the hook onto Zadik, but he just finds the lifesteal that he needs. And wow, they just don't weren't able to find the damage it looked like there sadly no but that's okay because this is this is it you know 
This is what you want to see in a final. Yeah. You want everyone to be pushed to the limits. So this is a great... Okay, so Hard Rocker's trying to reset now. Um, a couple of them recalling, getting some new items. Now heading back out on the map after that one. All right. Back onto the live game here. Ah! All right. We can't help ourselves. It's just our mentality right now. <laughs> yeah. In game three, it's really hard not to watch the the match happened live. Alright, so anyway, here we are. Things kind of, um, you know, Hard Rocker's trying to push and grab, secure some vision. I mean, they, how do you think they should, Adam, how do you think they should go about trying to knock down some of these towers? To not, you know, one of the things is, you know, right now, the person who's actually doing anything in the game is Silas. Uh, Yep. You know, he's 5-2 and two right now, so what they really need to do is just focus on him, mm -hmm. get him out of the match. I mean, just get shut him down now. Um, you're, you, the team right now is very, is very damage heavy, so mm -hmm. they can actually probably shred him down soon. Yeah, and then, I agree, and it's, yeah. it's really nice that Sam is kind of off to the races yeah. as well. Uh, he's picked Sam, up a few kills. Sam is very off to the races right now, so is Void. Getting out those ultimates, being more of that supportive jungle with Karthus instead of trying to carry the game. Ooh, and Yoki is going to try and get some damage onto the Janna here and oh, here. Oh, he was really close to got, getting that. They blew everything to keep yeah, that Janna alive. blew everything. Ooh, and a pause coming out. We don't know. Um, Windows update. Oh, okay. We know why. Okay. It's all right. Quick pause. It's all right. It's all good. It's all good. Looks like there it is. Two, one, play. So a lot of good things happening for this Hard Rockers. You know, if they take out the Sivir as well, that's going to help them. But I, they don't know that this Baron is happening, which is a problem. Yeah. So they're going to have to face check. Oh, and a nice dash there from Zar uh, Z uh, Zodic. But he's going to take a lot of damage, and they're going to stop the Baron once again. And nothing. He had the Caitlyn ultimate, didn't do anything. J Riggs, you know, he is not having the best performance now in games two and three, and he's going to get absolutely destroyed by and undervalue. A great fear beyond death there. What a great, great play. Oh, and now there goes Zonic. And here we go. Fro Frodo Baguettes is trying to do something. And now the Hard Rockers are on to the Baron. Yep, they, they figured they took out the mid lane, they took out the jungler, try their chances at securing this Baron. Yeah, there's not really much that the Sivir can really do right Ooh. now. So They are going to instead look to fight, though. Oh no, this might go in a, a disastrous way. There's a lot of damage coming on out. The Shen trying to run away. There is still full health tanks happening. Yuki! He's trying to just collapse on it, and he picks up the kill. 350. He goes on to the Sivir. Now, Jan is going to be taken out, and here comes the ultimate from the Karthus. And the Karthus gets it. Requiem. And that pulls is a uh, delayed ace, actually. That is a ace. That's Killed what you need. All five of them. Way to go, Hard Rockers. Getting the early ace at 25 minutes. And things for IUPUI. Not looking that great now. This is the mid. This is where we hit that mid-game wall, you know. Uh, in the first game, is right here. Yep. And I think the Hard Rockers have done a great job adapting to that. So now they just got to get Vision back out there. Got to find where they're warding. So there is a control ward on Baron. So what a great call there. Instead of doing Baron, let's just get a couple more kills and try mm -hmm. and even up this gold. Yeah. I think that was a good call by the Hard Rockers. So there is a... Um, and they've done a great job at protecting their Tier 2 towers as well. Yeah. Because they're, they haven't dropped a tower in a while. 
which is good because we haven't really been able to grab any towers. So yeah, we this, don't. This first tower, the tower in mid only has 581, and this tower in top lane only has, I can't read it. 1,700. Yeah, about 1,700, almost 1,800, so. Okay, so Frodo Baguette's going to be matching this. I will say, having the second monitor is really helping us. Oh, yeah. We can Being able to, like, watch the game from numerous perspectives. Yeah, so we can kind of just see what's happening all around the map. Um, kind of looking at the red side jungle of Vision. They only they don't really have much. Oh, and a really good death sentence on Zadik, but he blows his stopwatch, and that will be enough with the Shen teleport. Shen teleport's actually interrupted, but now Undervalued finds himself in a bit of a sticky situation. Going to try to damage this out. Throws his ultimate onto the Rengar, and that will cause him to disengage. But now, Lantern through, and Undervalued gets out of there. And here comes the Karthus ultimate from the Silas. Not enough. Not enough. That was a great play by Undervalued. Yeah, stopping the teleport, stopping the Shen ultimate. Oh, and here we go. I think Yuki's in a little bit of trouble here. Oh, and the, oh. oh. That would have been dope. I think that would have they would have taken him out there if they landed yeah. that. So now the Hard Rockers are needing to be in a situation where they can start actually pushing again. Um, this top tower for this for the red side for IUPUI only has 1,300 health. They haven't gotten a tower yet, so they really need to start pushing these towers, or they're not gonna they're gonna get into a situation where they can't do anything. So, so a lot of backs happening right now for the for IUPUI. But it is this is a game of scaling, and honestly, I like the Hard Rockers' chances when it comes to that. Scaling comps are always good unless you uh, unless you can't scale. I mean, unless yeah, exactly. <laughs> unless mean, you lose the game in the first. That minutes, that is so. that is, you know, that's the risk and reward with these late game scaling comps. Yeah, and I. And the Rengar honestly didn't start this game too well, so that helped us out a lot. Is you know ha not being, not having the Rengar is necessarily something that you're afraid of. Definitely working the Hard Rockers advantage. So at this point, this is the Hard Rockers game to lose. I mean, the game to lose and win. I think we talked about this before. It just comes down to who wants this more, you know. Both these teams fairly evenly matched. You know, wh who put in more preparation? You know, which team is going to be working their way through these tough, you know, game-changing scenarios? And the Sivir is just starting to completely ramp up. 264 creep score. Yeah, but one thing we got to be careful of is now... The Lawrence has Executioner Calling. That does a lot of damage. Has Grievous Wounds with it. Mm -hmm. Oh, and here comes the, here comes the Collapse on the Undervalue. And the knockup will land. And he gets ulted by Silas. He gets a little taste of his own medicine there. That's, yep. that's actually kind of funny to watch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I would gets, not want to be on the other side of that, honestly. Gets her Sorry, got Sam. Ulted. Don't want to flame. Ooh. And now here comes IUPUI. Nice stun, but not enough yeah, to do anything. Yeah, they are just going full board in. But they find the hook onto the Sivir. Not quite able to take him down, but enough to push them off of the turrets. So another couple more Tark Harvest stacks for this Karthus, who is now sitting at 12. 12. Yep. So that's about 70 extra damage. Which adds up, honestly. Yeah, I was going to say, any amount of damage adds up. Now some blue wards happening. Sivir is going to clear them out, so... Oh, and there's the hook onto the Sivir. No. Ah, oh, but no one really there. And they didn't really have vision either, so more of just like... Alright, so Hard Rockers just resetting the map now. <laughs> I 
There we go. We're going to take that off. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. Little bit of communication there in the, amongst the teams. <laughs> Gotta have it, though. Yeah. It's all friendly. So a lot of deboarding happening here for IUPUI. You know, I think they're fighting their strive again, but he, you never know mm -hmm. what can happen here. And this card, this is getting really big, though. Yeah, it's something I don't want to mess with. I think it's going to be... I wish I could play Karthus this well. Yeah. Ooh, oh, my God. Oh, the ultimate stolen once again. It hasn't gone to kill yet, though. No, it hasn't. So... But still, the Silas has quite a bit of ability power. And now they're going to pick up the Mountain and the next dragon will be Elder. Ooh, they're going to walk straight on over to the Baron. They gotta be careful here. Ooh, and Gray Enigma is just gonna find himself in an unfortunate situation. Trying to clear out wards without really knowing where IUPUI was. So here they come. All the blue wards dropping on down. They do know they're on the Baron. I think they're gonna try and contest it, but I'm not sure. Yes, they are. And the boy tries to get out. He gets squashed right away. Here comes Requiem. And does a, actually a lot of damage. And stopwatch coming on out from J Riggs. What a fantastic play by IUPUI. They get a three for one team fight. All right, so now Baron buff. And that was just a must. Um, Unless, wait, yeah, that yeah, was you that. Can't loot, you can't drop that team fight there after they grab Baron. And now, her, her uh, IUPUI is headed to the bot lane here. Just cleaning up these towers, something that Hard Rockers had a hard time doing this game, grabbing towers. So, IUPUI resetting the map here. Have to see. Things kind of, uh, Hard Rockers kind of just confined to their base at this point. Yeah, that's the only place they can go. They got an inhibitor down. Now went down at the 32 minute mark so it's going to be about until the uh, 37 uh, almost 38 minutes in and so four more minutes yeah the APUI doing a great job at just cleaning out our vision in our jungle A lot of, now everyone's grouping top. Now we're seeing Undervalue trying to take this Shen one on one. Right, yeah, Tower's just falling left and right. Now Silas just using. going to cast that card, this ultimate for himself. And doesn't do a lot of damage. Nice flash there from Undervalue to stay alive. And now here comes the team fights. Everything going up in shambles. The Hard Rockers trying to find a way to win this fight here. And no one has there. gone down. And Not there's, able to find there's any space. There's all the stopwatches and zonias you could ask for. Everyone went golden there. And now IUPUI is looking to end this game. And they're going to take the Nexus and take home this best of three.
Interesting matchup there, I will say. Oops. There we go. <clears throat> so, best of three series, Hard Rockers fall. They fall down to one and two in the North Conference. We'll find out their ranking later. On Monday. On Monday. Monday night probably is when we'll find out. So, well, I think that will do it for us today. Make sure you tune in on Tuesday night, uh, Tuesday afternoon for the Hard Rock Luncheon. Wyatt will be there, myself included. Um, Wyatt will give an update, and um, and all the rest of the coaches of the Hard Rocker Athletic Department, basketball will be there, track and field. So uh, we'll all be there, and that starts at 12 o'clock this Tuesday. You can go to GoRockers.com and watch it live there. If you're in Rapid City, come on down. It's $5 for a lunch. So, well, Wyatt. Yep. Not the result we wanted, but, you know. Yep. That's so. competition. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for watching, and we'll see you next week for Week 4.